Okay, prime engines for takeoff. Engines primed. Check airspace for obstructions. I can't see anything. There's some sort of malfunction with the viewing screen. Try giving the window a wipe. Uh, okay, airspace clear. Reverse polarity in the transducer array. What? Let's push that button there. Ah, okay. Um, shouldn't Mother be piloting the ship? No, she's a very nervous driver. How can she be nervous? She's a computer. Yeah, yeah, I, I think when I uploaded her baking software, it sort of overwrote everything else. Right, stand by for takeoff. Five, four, three, two, one. Woo! <laughs> Reach for the sky! Space Hacks by Stuart Sumner and Ian Simons. Episode 1, Lost in Space Ship. And ordinarily, this is where we'd take off. Charlie, you said we were finally going to do what this ship was built for and explore the galaxy in search of unimaginable news stories. Sorry, Moog, but that's the beauty of an infinite universe. If everything possible happens somewhere, why bother going there to check it? Just make it up and you can't be proved wrong. Mm, but I want to go to the fantastic outer reaches of the universe. I mean, what's the point of being intergalactic space reporters with a hypergalactic stealth ship if we spend the whole time parked on Clapham Common disguised as a hedge? You don't know how lucky you are. You're one of only two humans ever employed by the Intergalactic News Federation. It's a high honour. Who's the other one? I am. Really? And that's an honour? Yes. But even you don't like it here. No, I bore it. But, like Jesus, I hate the sin, yet love the sinner. So, just because you do a job you hate, suddenly you're Jesus. No, that, that, all I meant was you must know your enemy. Keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. Sir uh, Sun Tzu wrote the uh, Art of War. Died 400 BC. And how did he die? Well, he was stabbed in the back by an enemy. His friends couldn't help, they were too far away. But that's not the point. It isn't? No. The point is, I work in the media, but not for the media. See, the Federation wants crowd-pleasing propaganda about Empire forces winning heroic battles against the robotic armies of the FFFF. Robots! Now, this is exactly what I'm saying. Let's find the robots! But, as you know, we can't pander to their agenda. Real journalism is about finding the emotional heart of a situation and painting a detailed landscape of passions and ideals. Which is why we make up lies about stuff we haven't seen. Nothing's a lie in an infinite universe, Moog. We're inventing the truth. Turning dreams into reality. So you wouldn't say we're just being lazy then? Sitting here making stuff up instead of being proper space journalists? Moog, I'm shocked at you. No, no, hurt. We're working twice as hard here to fight the oppressions of a sensationalist, right-wing propaganda machine. Not only do we report news, but we go the extra mile by making it up too. Well, it's not that I'm not grateful. It's great living in an alien spaceship and eating biscuits. All I'm saying is that when I signed up, I thought there'd be more space stuff. Less hedge stuff. Ah, uh, yes. I remember your first day. Seems like only 18 months ago. Ah, uh, yeah. I was just some kid searching for pornography in a hedge, when suddenly... So, be honest, Mother. What do you think of the report? Which report, dear? The one about carnivorous hats. The one I've just spent the last ten minutes reading to you. Sorry, dear, I wasn't listening. I think we've been discovered. Ah, uh, yes. There we are. My God, it's, it's a group of Secret Service scientists come to dissect me. I don't think it is, you know. I can only see one five-foot-ten male, Caucasian, needs a haircut. He's entering the outer hedges. Well, is he close? I don't know. I can't see very well. The screen's gone black. They didn't obscure our cameras. They'll have probes and everything. No, dear. It's dark. It's night time. Perhaps you should go out there. Just tell him there's nothing to see here. Are you crazy? I can't just step out of an invisible door in a fake hedge and tell him there's nothing strange going on. Well, we'd better do something. He's getting closer. Right. Uh, uh, action stations. Hedge disguise at maximum. Increasing foliage. Intensify the forward branches. Contact in T-5. Simulate dangerous wildlife noises. Initiating emergency stinging levels. It's no good. He's coming through. Emergency. Prepare to self-destruct ship. Wait, it's okay. He's starting to leave. There you are, you see. I may not be top of the range, but I know how to disguise a ship. What was that? Oh, now that's odd. What? He got sucked in through the air vent. He's in the next room. What? 
Wow. This is the coolest hedge ever. Ever. And you've never looked back since, have you? Uh, well, I've looked back a bit. What? Look, it's not that I'm not grateful. I just thought there would be more than this. I'm teaching you the trade, aren't I? Yes, you are. The trade of living in a hedge and eating biscuits. Oh, sorry. Do you want me to go and tell Mother you don't like her cooking? No. The cooking's great. It's just... I'm thirsty for action. That's not a thirst. It's just a craving. Well, what does that matter? Well, OK. In order to report on others' emotions, you must first understand your own, OK? So, there are five main thirsts and seven subsidiary thirsts. Oh. So, thirst for drink, obviously. Uh, thirst for victory. Thirst for blood, uh, and so on. Uh, what about thirst for money? You missed that one out. Nah, that's a hunger. You're confused. So how many hungers are there? Just the one. For money? Yep. Ah. Oh. Well, what about food? Ah, well, see, technically that's a fear. You're scared of an empty stomach. You're running to your donuts for mercy. You know, they're like little edible priests to you. Help me, donuts! Save me from the nasty starving! Let me eat you all up! Yes, you're right. I am getting confused again. Look, Moog, look, it, it may look to you like I'm being lazy and achieving nothing. Well, it does a bit, but yes. But in fact, in fact, I'm achieving higher aims. But, well... Yeah, you see, when I'm given a job I don't believe in, I don't do it. No, 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 I do the opposite. Yeah, I use that opportunity to destroy the oppressor. Mm. So, if I'm asked to report on an ambassador's visit, I'll ignore an ombudsman's departure. But I don't... Uh, ask me to report on a war, I'll simply join the Belgian netball team. Right. And that will destroy the oppressor? Yeah. Mm. Well, eventually. Charlie, can you please come to the computer room? There's a dear. Right, we'll finish this later. Hi, Mother. You seem down, dear. Have you boys been fighting again? Yeah. Moog doesn't think my plan to destroy the evil world of media through not doing anything is really working. He thinks we should be reporting on actual stories. Well, that's what I called you in for, dear. I found you a lovely story. Well, no offence, Mother, but the last story you suggested didn't go down too well. Listing Class 4B's French oral results may have been lost on some of our viewers on the outer reaches of the Horsehead Nebula. Well, I've got an even better story for you this time. Uh, there's nothing to do with the youth choir's upcoming Baroque recital? Charlie, dear, have some faith in your mother. This time it's different. I've thought about what you've said in the past, and now I've really found you something groundbreaking. Oh, go on, then. What do you got for us? I'm getting a distress sick. Oh, great. What, alien? Well, it's certainly not human. Oh, right. Is it like a wounded battleship on the edge of a black hole? Well, not quite, no. But it does seem to be trapped. Yeah? Oh, Moog will love this. Right, can we get there in time to save it? Oh, I think you should be able to make it. Oh, what are we waiting for? Uh, what are the coordinates? Well, you know the big oak tree next to the swings? This had better be good. A feline entity seems to have been pursued up there by a canine aggressor. So the angle we're taking for the Brogni Gabroting people on the outer reaches of the Horsehead Nebula is a cat stuck in a tree. It's a feel-good story. Right. And I suppose you're going to go and ask me to help it down. I'll put the kettle on. Right, that's right, yes, oh, look at you. Hey. Charlie, what have you got there? Who's a good little boy, eh? Who's a good little boy? Me, I am. Moog, I want you to meet our newest crew member. Found him stuck in a tree, the poor little thing. Ooh, what's wrong with it? It looks like sick in a bag. Hey, careful what you say, it's got feelings. Feelings? It's barely got a head. Of course it's got a head. Look, what's that bit there? Well, that's never a head. How can you tell? Because it just weed out of it. Oh, yeah. Oh, cute. Oh, yeah. I think it might have diseases. Oh, it hasn't. It's ominous. Don't be mean. Look at it. Look, oh, you're a lovely little fella, aren't you? Oh. Oh. oh that's right. Charlie Palmer's your mummy now. You're a worry. What's it called? How am I supposed to know? What about Beelzebub? Don't be nasty. He's more of a cuddle. He's more of a Mr. Pukey. You're not even trying. OK, then. What about Simon Peters? Simon Peters? Yep, you're right. Too formal. Simon Johnson. <laughs> Oh, oh but you, you scared him off now? If he gets lost on the ship, it's all your oh, fault. Cog on line one. It's the boss. C quick, look busy. Uh, remember, he can smell fear. Well, what do you want me to do? I don't know. Smell casual. Right. Uh, ah, um, hello, yeah. Cog. Uh, how are you? You look great. Uh, I saw that editorial you wrote last week. Uh, it's Silence. Your pathetic noises are unworthy of my ears. I have found you out. Found what out? You have been sending me fake stories. Oh, no, no, no. I assure you. Enough. That... I sent a second news crew to check your last report. Oh. Imagine my surprise to find that there is no such thing as Alan the Talking Star! Oh, wait, Alan was real! He... I had your footage analysed! 
That was no star. It was your boyfriend's painted yellow. Uh, I'm not his boyfriend. And your story of the inflatable singing dog. Well, well, we took some artistic license with that one. I had it found and brought in. It could not sing, and it did not inflate for long. Uh, But it was a dog. Mr. Charlie Palmer. We are building a reputation as the galaxy's premier news network. You have been assigned to your quadrant to provide factual stories, not bursting dogs and fancy-dressed boyfriends. I can't help it. I'm creative. I'm a poet trapped in the body of a reporter. Quiet. There's a galactic war going on all around you. I suggest you find an angle and cover it. Well, I'm covering it from Earth's perspective. Sitting in your ship and waiting for it all to go away is not an angle. Why can't you head closer to Alpha Centauri and track down the Chica Ambassador? Uh, won't that be dangerous? You have two hours to provide a proper news story, or I shall be forced to destroy the universe bit harsh, isn't it? Yeah. Well, perhaps I am overreacting. All right, I'll just have you two killed. Called out. A proper news report in two hours? It can't be done! We could try and find that ambassador. We could hunt the kidnappers down and interview hostages on the edges of a lost star system. You're loving this, aren't you? Mm. The naivety of youth. Look, there's no way we can find a missing ambassador and write up a story in two hours. So we might as well give up. Well, now then, where's the best place to hide from Korg until all this blows over in, say, uh, 70 years or so? Well, I'm going to try and do the report. Of course! Mm. <laughs> oh, and on the remote off chance that doesn't work, well, you can just fight off Korg with your bare hands. Oh, I don't know. I've seen Korg. He's massive. Ah, you've only seen him on the screen. There's no perspective. <laughs> he's actually only two inches tall. Really? Nah, he's massive. We're dead. It's fine. Mother will come through. Ah, Sweet the way you trust in her abilities. But only this morning, you see, I asked her to scan for major intergalactic news all she found was Fluffy. Oh, speaking of which, you can let me look for him. Fluffy! 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 What? Who's Fluffy? The cat thing. Oh, don't worry, I'll put some poison down. Don't you dare poison my baby. Charlie, that's no baby. It's barely even afterbirth. Stop obsessing about that bag of offal and concentrate on finding a new story. I can't do it. I'm, I'm like a surgical laser with a blunt edge. What, lasers don't go blunt. You're more like a rusty trowel. It's like I always say, this job's like a girlfriend. One minute you're having fun, mm. you're cuddling, having a little kiss. Dressing up as a badger and leaping out at her from behind a ladder. Y- yeah. Lazy mornings in bed together. And... Then you dress up as a weasel and leap out at her from behind a cupboard. <laughs> Moog, mm. have you ever had a girlfriend? Mm, yes, loads. Why? No reason. Oh, what's the use? We're finished. Look, you can sit here moping. I'm going to see what Mother can do. Yeah, well, I'm not going to hold my breath. Oh, while you're there, ask her if she's seen Fluffy. Well, I hope she hasn't. She'll think your colon's escaped. Again. Hello, dear. How are you? Not too bad, Mother. How are you? Well, you don't come to see me as often as you used to. I was here this morning. Were you? Yes. Listen, Mother, we've got a problem. Oh, dear. You boys are always getting yourselves into scrapes. Sometimes I wonder if it's my fault. No, it's not your fault. We're old enough now to make our own mistakes. We've grown up and we've got our own lives to lead. It's getting through things like this that makes us stronger. And anyway, you're a computer. I just feel responsible for my boys. Well, could you help us find a story about the missing ambassador? Korg found out about the fake stories and he's threatening to kill us if we don't produce results in an hour and a half. What did I tell you about lying? I know. Mother knows best. I know. Can we discuss this some other time? I think Korg really might kill us this time. Oh, that is a pickle. Would you like a sandwich? Um, actually, can you start... I can make you some cake, too, if you like. Look, I don't want to hurry you or anything, but it would be great if you could start that scan. Hmm. You mean initiate a long-range theta wave comms logging procedure employing relational databases to cross-reference location hypotheses to establish the most statistically valid location proposition? Blimey. Yes, that sounds perfect. How about a jelly dodger? Mother! Sorry! Of course, I I want a jammy dodger. Okay, I'll start a fresh batch. Here's a Garibaldi to tide you over. Thank you. Mm. Don't forget the scan, will you? Might take me a while while the baking program's running. And when you get a chance, can you do a search of the ship for Charlie's evil pet? It's escaped. Hey, Charlie. What are you doing? I'm packing up. 
There's no way we're going to find the ambassador in time, so I don't want to be here when Cork turns up. Anyway, it's time to get out. It's time to grow. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be a wandering poet. Yeah, I'll, I'll wander from town to town, weaving my free-form verbal tapestries in exchange for food. So, you've given up trying to bring down the evil media empire, then? No, no, I'm just using different weapons. Verse will be my sword and pathos my landmine. So, while I find the ambassador and get the intergalactic scoop of the year, you're just going to run away. For the last time, I'm not running away. Well, there's no need to panic. Mother will find something. Well, I don't think a feature on the Tooting Beck Senior Citizens Punctuation Club is going to save us this time. Anyway, knowing Mother, she's probably cooking something right now instead of focusing on the scan. Um, Mother and her cooking, eh? <laughs> Oi, what are you eating? Huh? W what? Uh, nothing. Just, just... Yeah, no, you're chewing. Mm. Yeah, and you just swallowed. Right, OK, did you ask Mother to cook something? Uh, no. I, I'll just go and check that she's onto it. I mean, I definitely told her, but you know how she is. <laughs> she could be making jammy dodgers or something, for all I know. There you are, Mook. You never visit anymore. I was just here five minutes ago. Really? Oh, well. Would you like a sandwich? Yes, please. Um, no. Actually, no, that's kind of why I came. Could you sort of possibly focus on the scanning rather than cooking for a bit? Only it's quite important. Oh, it's like that, is it? No, it's nothing. It's, it's you just... You don't like my cooking. You only have to say I'm sure you can get your own food from the supermarket. I don't mind, really, I don't. Mother, it's not that I don't love your food. We both do, and we really appreciate all the work you do. It's just we really need help with the scan. Charlie's threatening to leave if we don't come up with something soon. Well, I can't help you boys if you can't play nicely together. You're always bickering, the pair of you. Well, we'll try to be better. If you can just help me a bit more quickly and stop telling me off quite so much. You could try telling him you like his poetry. I don't think he'd believe me. I think he's just a bit shy. No, it's rubbish. He does this one about socks that makes me want to rip my face off. I think you just need to be nicer to Charlie. Well, thanks for the advice, but I think I'll stick to bickering. You try being nice to him once and he'll just expect it from then on. He loses all respect for you and becomes wild, like some kind of, um, vole. So can you start the scan? Have you tidy your room? What's that got to do with it? You said you'd do it yesterday. Yeah, well, there was the thing. And then some stuff happened, and then I got kind of sidetracked. There'll be no scan until you've tidied your room, young man. Mother! We've got an hour and a quarter to get a report to Korg or he'll kill us. Unless you want me to tidy it for you. Remember what I found last time? Mm, OK, I'll do it now. But can you at least start the scan? Mucky magazine. Yes, I know. Can we please not talk about this ever again, please? Filthy, smucky, dirty pictures. Mother! Right. Shirts packed. Trousers packed. Socks. Oh, socks. Like figure-hugging foot hats. Tight sheaths of foot fabric. How your touch enthralls. Oh, the disgrace of pathos. Oh, oh. Hello, what are you doing here? Mm. What are you doing to your face? Oh, nothing. I've just come to help you pack. Really? Yeah. I know your mind's made up. And a strong-willed guy like you won't be dissuaded, so I've come to help. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I won't be deflected. Once I've made a decision, my mind's like a locomotive. The tracks are laid. The course is set. I'm an unstoppable bullet of resolve. Destination? Triumph. But, um, do you really need to pack all those socks? Yeah. There's one thing I remember my father telling me when I was a boy. He'd sit me in a bucket and lower me down into the well and say, A man can never have too many socks, Charlie. Ah, uh, that's rubbish. What if you had, like, 19 socks? I mean, that would be amazing. Moog, I've already got 103. Whew. OK, but what if you had a trillion and three? They'd black out the sun. The human race would die out just because of your fetish. All the fabric in the world would be used up in your socks. There'd be uprisings, people standing outside your massive sock palace chanting, Lend us a sock, fascist! And you wouldn't even be able to hear them due to the soundproofing qualities of all those socks. Hey, 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 look, I'm talking to you about my dad. Show some respect. Oh, OK. Why did he put you in a well? Oh, he was an idiot. So, you're definitely off then. Weren't you listening? My mind's made up. I'm just checking. I think it's a good decision. Very noble of you, giving me a chance to spread my wings like this. Give me a turn in the captain's chair. Let me take the glory. Yeah, yeah I see what you're doing. 
It won't wash. You won't get me to stay by making me jealous. Maybe it's a double bluff and I want you to leave. You see, you kind of gave your bluff away when you came in wearing that Please Don't Leave Me Charlie t-shirt. Yeah, well, I've been waiting for a chance to wear this. Shame about your cat thing, though. All lost and alone on the big ship. <laughs> yeah, that won't work either. I'm taking him with me. As soon as Mother finds him, she'll send him on. Look, Charlie, you can't leave. We're a team. Remember why you started this job in the first place? Yes, to bring down the media empire. It's not working, Moog. I'm just a washed-up old space hack with too many socks. No, don't talk that way, Charlie. <sighs> Think back to your first reporting job. Oh. Ah. The Leather Industry Gazette. Mm -hmm. I was working my way into the heart of the media beast. It's a long way to the heart from there. That's barely the ankle. I was sub-editor of the Leather Treatment Advice page, mm -hmm. when one day I was approached by these mysterious cloaked figures. They said they needed someone with a passion for truth and the written word, a man with unshakable integrity and rapier-like perception to scour the local galaxy from an earthly perspective. Hmm. And you believed them? Well, yeah. They were very convincing cloaks. Well, if that proud young journalist were here today, do you know what he'd say to you? Nice haircut? Well, maybe. It is a good haircut. Yeah, thanks. So, uh, anyway, he'd say, Nice haircut, Charlie, but you need to stick to your guns. Help you make Moog out and save the day. So, have you made your mind up? Yes, I told you. I... Have you had a Garibaldi? No. You've got raisins on your chin. Uh, uh, they're blackheads. <laughs> you smell of shortbread. OK, look, we could spend all day standing here trying to work out who's had biscuits and who hasn't, uh, but... It's very simple. You've had them and I haven't. R well, look, I just want to know, are you really leaving? Yes. Fine. At least then I'll get a chance to wear my Oh Well Charlie's Gone t-shirt. <laughs> Hi, Mother. I've come to say goodbye. You can't leave. Uh, don't try and stop me. I'm like the coming of a new season. You can't stop the autumn. Oh, no. You can raise your umbrella against the falling rain, but the leaves, oh, they will still be red. And well may you button up your hat against the coming frost. I just made you haven't got a coat on. Oh. Well, don't worry about it. My socks will keep you warm. OK, then, dear. Bye. So, uh, I'll be off, then. OK. I'll, I'll just walk out that door and leave. right -o. Right. Well... That's me, then. Hi. Actually, I'm not sure I've packed enough socks. Hello again, dear. Cup of tea? Oh, thanks. Slice of Battenberg? No, no, not really hungry, thanks. How about the results of that scan you boys were so interested in? Mother, I'm full. What? Scan? Yes, I picked up some coded transmissions about the Ambassador. Would you like to hear about it? Yes! What have you found out? Ah, there you are, Moog. Have you tidied your room yet? Yes, Mother. Good boy. Apparently he escaped from the kidnappers, but his ship crash-landed somewhere in the Sol system. Sol? That rings a bell. Mother, can you bring up the star chart? Well, yes and no. Do you want the good news or the bad? The good? Well, the good news is I found your little pet. You found him? Oh, Charlie's little baby. There he is. What? That's the good news? Well, then what's the bad? Unfortunately, it disgraced itself over the navigational computer, so the star chart's not in action. Can you fix it? Not really a question of fixing it, so much as waiting for all the wee to dry. You see? You and your bloody pet. That's enough of that potty mouth, young man. Yeah, Moog. I got him to cheer you up. Cheer me up? Well, why didn't you just get me a trumpet? I didn't know you wanted one. Well, you never asked. I'm not playing with that thing. It's got the play. <laughs> Nice one, Moog. Now we've got to coax him out from under the navigation unit again. And we've still got to find this missing ambassador. Korg on screen one. I'll patch him through in here. Where's my story? Uh, we're, we're just putting the finishing touches to it. I smell your fear, human. Oh, that's the sweet smell of success, I assure you. We're on the ambassador's trail. And anyway, we've still got an hour. Excellent! This better be good or you'll never work again. You can't fire us. It's not necessary to fire journalists who have been forced to eat their own heads. Call out. What are we going to do? Well, if no one knows where the ambassador's ship is, and we can't get there in time... I am not dressing up as a spaceship, Charlie. It'll be rubbish. Well, it's a million to one shot, but it might just work. Trust me. Mother's great at costumes, you'll see. Mother, how long would it take to make a totally convincing spaceship suit for Moog? A flying saucer or a rocket? A uh, rocket. About three weeks? Hmm. Flying saucer, then? Four weeks. More zips, you see. Right. We've got an hour or we die. What can you give us? 
I could do a cardigan, a silver cardigan with big shoulder pads. Well, that'll have to do then. No, it won't. I, I'm not doing it again. It's all right. We'll fuzz up the image a bit. It'll be fine. While you practice looking aerodynamic, I'm going to try and coax Fluffy back out. Come on, Fluffy. Come on, boy. Come on, little... Blimey, could you have made it any tighter, Mother? It's like a leotard. Oh, don't worry about that, Moog. We've only got two minutes. Okay, now you're a spaceship and you've crashed on an ocean planet. But no, right? I'm so Charlie, this is a corridor. It doesn't look anything like an ocean. And what are you doing with that bucket? <laughs> Better? Uh, yes. Okay, right, so I'll set the camera up here. I'll be doing my report just in front of you, so follow my lead. Mm. Right, uh, get your little silver booties well, on. I I'm not sure spaceships wear booties, Charlie. Don't worry, you look great. Uh, now, if you can just get this little uh, pouch, pouch on over your groin what, there. What's it supposed to be? I don't know. Fuel boosters. It's a posing pouch, dear. <laughs> Mr. Korg is on the line. I'll just patch him through, shall I? Forget the pouch move. Just right. start acting uh, uh, spaceshipy. Yes. Fluffy, my little beauty, get out of the shop. Mr. Charlie Palmer, your report, if you please. Yes, Mr. Korg. Uh, well, as you can see, I am standing right in front of the spaceship now, where our sources suggest the missing ambassador is located. Uh, the picture may be a little hazy due to the ship's cloaking systems, which we're trying to disable. Now move. Um, Fluffy, get him. Try all that's holy. I obviously underestimated you boys. Spaceships don't talk. Um, so, you like the report? It's the scoop of the year. But why is your little assistant dressed in the manner of a circus homosexual? Brilliant! Uh, well, it's... Uh, uh, why is... Oh, sorry, he's... Why is he what? Your ambassadorial highness. Are you well? Have my staff looked after your needs? Charlie, who's he talking to? Mother, what does the missing ambassador look like? The Chica are a feline race, usually less than 50 centimetres tall, noted for their asymmetric limbs and lumpy, misshapen heads. Fluffy? <coughs> Finally got rid of that furball. Thank you. I am well. Your staff have been most welcoming. Well, I'm delighted they found you. I'll send the crew to pick you up and return you to the embassy immediately. Um, sorry, can I take this stupid suit off now? Oh, yes. Tell the pretty one to remove his clothes. He can dance for me while I wait to be collected. Oh, dance, my pretty. Dance. What? what? I, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not dancing for you, you intergalactic freak. You will do as you are told. Uh, just do it, Moog. It'll be over before you know it. Mother, some mood music, please. Oh, oh, that's right. Come oh. closer. Yes. Place me on your lap. I don't... Oh, that's right, Moog. Shake that booty. Oh, yeah, you've done this before, boy. Oh, Charlie, help! Space Hacks was written by Stuart Sumner and Ian Simons and featured Dan Mersch as Charlie, Tim Key as Moog, Prunella Scales as Mother, Dan Tetzel as Korg and Jot Davis as Fluffy. The music was written by Ben Walker and the producer was Victoria Lloyd. This is the life, eh, Moog? What, washing up? No, 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 I mean us. Here on this ship, we're living the dream. <laughs> Do as we please. We answer to no one. Except Korg. Well, yeah, OK. Besides him, we answer to no one. We got it good. Well, you've got it good. I'm up to my elbows in greasy water and you're standing there holding a tea towel and staring out of the window. Are you going to do the drying or not? Uh, men like me aren't destined for things like washing up. Me have a greater purpose, Moog. No point handing me a flannel and telling me to dry a plate. I mean, <laughs> did Da Vinci wash up? Did Michelangelo varnish sheds? <laughs> You'll help Moog with the dishes, Charlie, or there'll be no pudding. Yeah, we'll never see you do the dishes, do we, Mother? I suppose it's some kind of anti-domestic feminist statement, is it? I'm a hypergalactic stealth ship, dear. I have one or two other things to worry about. And more importantly, she hasn't got any hands. Well, if I'm going to be reduced to washing up, let's at least do it properly. Look at it like a work of art, Moog. Use the soap to evoke purity in the cutlery. Use the scourer to paint a blank canvas onto that filthy pan. Be the scourer. Actually, where is the scourer? Where's the soap? Why is everything going missing round here? Well, it's hardly everything, Charlie. Oh, yeah? What else do you think may have gone missing? I mean, did you notice anything strange about me? Um, is it that you're naked? Finally! Yes! Where the hell are my clothes? Uh, how should I know? Everything seems to be going missing. Have you tried looking? I can't. The light bulbs were the first thing to go. Hmm. Yes, it's definitely a mystery and there's no way we'll ever work it out, so we shouldn't even try. Moog, why so defensive? 
No, no reason. Wow, is that the time? I've got um, something to do on the computer. Oh, fine. Fine! Yeah, so I'll just do the washing up on my own then, without any soap or clothes. Where are the gloves gone? Mother, it's not just me, is it? Where's everything going? I really couldn't say, dear. Is there something going on I should know about? Would you like an Eccles cake, dear? Oh. Oh, yeah, I suppose so, yeah. Yes, it'll all be better with a nice... Oh. How about a Yorkshire pudding instead? Mm. No, it's not really a Yorkshire pudding moment. Well, it's sort of the same thing, isn't it? Just without the raisins. Oh, they haven't gone missing as well. I'm afraid so. What's become of us? Are we to live like animals? Oh, to think that I, Charlie Palmer... Poet, reporter, man. Cork on line one, dear. He wants to see you both in the transporter room. Oh, my God! What's wrong? There's a transporter room? Space Hacks by Stuart Sumner and Ian Simons. Episode 2, Two Men and a Baby, Alien. All right, Moog. Did you know about this place? Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. So everyone knew about the transporter room but me. Patching Korg through now. Agent Earthlings, it is I, Korg. Hello, Korg. Shut your throat, scum. Oh. I'm beating my nephew Thoth aboard the ship. You will escort him to his nursery immediately. Is it near the common? Quite near, yes. Few dozen light years at most. Oh! We're going to the stars! I want you to research a story on the way. There's a space bay auction for your measly planet, which ends in a few hours. I want an interview with a new owner, and a full report on your spleens in a box by tomorrow. Either will do nicely. An, an auction? For Earth? But what are they going to do with it? You're the reporters, you tell me. But personally, I'm hoping they break it up and use it for travel. Why do we have to look after your nephew? It's hardly a job for reporters. But then you are hardly reporters. Now, I expect my nephew to be well cared for. If I hear otherwise, you shall become extremely dead. Call out. What cult? Wow. <laughs> He looks just like Korg. Hello, Thoth. I'm Moog, and this is Charlie. <laughs> Look at the funny man! Wait, 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 get, 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 get him off my head! Oh, he's a playful little dear, isn't he? He definitely likes you, Charlie. Help! He's killing me! <laughs> funny man! Oh, funny mother, man. get out of wherever this nursery is so we can get rid of this little bugger before one of us dies! Setting course! Initializing coping shield! Security sources, lift off. Move. Can you please hold that little animal back? Yes. You're more his level. Um, uh, come here, little one. Could you cook? Could you right. could you cook? Right now then, this auction. Ah uh, yes, I was thinking about that. Yes, and thank you, Moog. But I think we'd better let the experienced journalist handle this. That's you, is it? Yeah, of course it's me. I have a background in investigative reporting. You have a background in milkshake. It's investigative reporting. The Leather Industry Gazette. Don't <laughs> ever mock the leg. There's not a finer leather-focused journal in all of Beaconsfield. As you see, but I know about the auction. No, Mook, you know about books with cardboard pages and trampolines. Now, why don't you go and keep an eye on Thoth while I get some peace and quiet and stop the report? Right. Where's my pen? Uh, I don't know. It's a mystery and we'll never solve it, so there's no point trying. Actually, how, how much do you reckon your pen was worth? Worth? I don't know. Why? It's no reason... Right, I'll try and keep Thoth quiet then. All right, good. And yeah, don't be afraid to use extreme violence. <coughs> Mother, I'm a, I'm a bit stuck on this report about the auction for Earth. See, I want to use it to expose the inherent injustice of property ownership. Okie dokie. Well, read me what you've written so far. Okay. Property. Colon. Yes. Well, obviously it's not finished. Uh, next, I thought I'd have a definition of property from the dictionary, but it's, it's gone missing, just like everything else round here. Mm. Well, perhaps you find it easier to think if you put some clothes on, dear. I've got any clothes, Mother? What about all that huge sock collection? I could sew them all together into a nice romper suit. <laughs> can't use them. They're precious, irreplaceable works of art. But I can see your penis. All right, well, 
bum. I suppose we could use some of the less collectible items. Mm. Now then, Thoth, what should we do? Um, kill an insect. See, I don't have any insects. Uh, kill a horse. Yes, that's nice. Anything that doesn't involve killing. I know, I know. Who wants to go in the playroom? If you're a good little, um, thing, I'll let you play with the steering wheel. <laughs> Look at all the flashing lights. It's just like a real cockpit. There you go, you play with those. I've got to do something on the computer. Play room. There you go. Play room. You'll like it here. Um, Mr. Mr. Mook. Yes. If I'm good... After playroom, kill funny man. Mm. You're a lot like your uncle. Now we're going to play cops and robbers. Ah. I'm the cop, and I've caught you. Ah. <laughs> you're not talking till your lawyer gets here, so I'm going to lock the door and bring you your bread and water. Launch system initiated. We're there already, Mother. No, dear, we're just taking it a little slowly through this quadrant. Bit of a nasty black hole up ahead. I need to take the next corner rather carefully. Mm. How's that article going along, anyway? Uh, oh, well, it's, it's still in its early stages. Yeah, this sort of conceptual piece, it requires a lot of thinking, you know. It's only amateurs dive in and start writing. Why don't you read me what you've got so far? Well, it, it's still fermenting, to be honest, Mother. It's, you mustn't disturb the delicate process of abstract thought too early. You haven't written a thing, have you? But you? You told me to choose some socks for you to turn into a romper suit. It's not an easy decision. They're all perfect in their own way. Perfect cones of cosy cloth. Oh, socks, how you caress my skin with your cottony charm. Oh, shoe-dwelling mistresses of a foot, how I adore the way... They've gone! What's gone, dear? My socks! They've taken my socks! Abandoned ship! Fire all weapons! Man overboard! Only no socks! Just only socks! This is the end! The end, Mother! No clothes! No raisins! Now this! Where's Moog? I bet this is Thoth's work. Moog's on the internet, dear. Again? What's he doing? Moog, this is the end. The last stop. The final curtain. The apocalypse. Armageddon. Goodbye, Mr. Chip. But don't worry. I'll write the article for you if you can't manage it. It's not that. It's my socks. They've gone. Ah, uh, mm, it's definitely a mystery and we'll never work it out. And as You keep saying that. What's with you? This could be good for you. A fresh start. You were getting too dependent on those socks anyway. It was becoming an obsession. That collection was the only thing I'd ever really achieved in life. Nah, we're finally going somewhere. We're finally reporters. Delivering an alien child to a nursery. This is no life for me. Oh, space with your inky blackness like the pupil of a dove's eye. Oh, your empty void. Empty of life. Empty except for little spaceships floating past the window. Hang on, what's that? How strange. That escape pod looks just like ours. God, we've got an escape pod? What exactly did you do with Thoth, Moog? I left him in the playroom. The playroom? Hmm. Which one's that again? It's the room on the left, past the porch, with a little cockpit inside. And the big sign saying only for emergency use? Yes, an emergency playroom. Every ship's got one, haven't they? Oh, dear. There's someone inside. Look, look, he's waving. Thoth! What's he doing? He's heading right for the black hole. Oh, right. Now that's not good, is it? Just how fast can that escape pod go, Mother? Very. Uh-huh. And how fast can we go? About the same. OK. We've got to stop him. Um, engage tractor beam? Which tractor beam would that be, dear? Uh, deploy emergency astronet? Fire the grappling ray? We must have something. Apparently we've got transporter rooms and escape pods that no one ever bothered to tell me about. Well, you know these things if you read the manual, dear. Men like me have no time for manuals. I'm a thinker, a poet. I unravel the great mysteries. Well, get unravelling. We're losing Thoth. Right, OK. Uh, now, by my calculations, taking all factors into account, uh, statistically speaking, mm. black holes aren't good? Yes, Charlie, well unravelled. Unless I get this ship between the pod and the hole within the next 30 seconds, the gravity well will pull Thoth straight to his certain death. Okay, 
We're switching controls to manual. I'm taking us in. Um, Charlie, are you sure that's sensible? It sounds like quite a complex manoeuvre. Moog, this is serious. Mm -hmm. Mother's a very competent cook. But would you let a baker fly a spaceship? Um... I'm taking us in. A baker, indeed. No more French fancies for you, young man. There, piece of cake, Moog, this space travel malarkey. We'll be there in no time. Someone's going to go very hungry. Uh, We've got you now, Thoth. Mook, would you like a fruit crumble? There's just enough ingredients for one, and I know it's Charlie's favourite, but he's obviously far too busy for pudding. Got him! Right, now just a simple breaking parabola, and we're done! (laughs) 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 Is uh, everyone okay? (coughs) I think so. Oh, the ginger snaps are all broken. Mother? I'm a fine dear for a simple baking program. I mean, far be it from me to criticise, but my idea of a breaking parabola isn't to speed up a bit and crash into something. Well, the brake button's the same colour as the turbo boost. So blame whoever designed this ship. Anyway, where's this skate pod gone? Well, you remember how he was between us and that black hole and we hit him at top speed? Oh, Right, we'll, we'll, we'll just have to go in after him. Uh, well, uh, didn't someone say something about certain death in there? Well, we can't just leave him. Well, Our splings depend on this. Uh, I don't know. Can't we throw a rope in after him or something? Uh, yeah, yeah, come on, there must be something, Mother. Transdimensional nephew locator, anti-gravity trousers, anything. Well, all network ships come with extreme navigation shields as standards. They would be able to get us in and out safely. Oh, dear. Ha! See, told you there'd be something. But unfortunately, they've also gone missing. Yeah, that figures. Oh, and don't bother saying it's a mystery we'll never unravel, Luke. It's... Mm-hmm. Okay. Call on line one. Ignore it. We're going in. Wow. Wow. So, this is what the inside of a black hole looks like. Oh. It's so... Black. Just think, we're the first humans ever to see this. To see what? Well, you know, the blackness. I'm getting something on the scanner. Is it Thoth? No, it appears to be some sort of office. Don't be ridiculous, Mother. We're inside a black hole. She's right, Charlie. There's an office just kind of floating there. You two are just so... F- Actually, it does look kind of office It's even got a car park. And look who's taken the disabled space. It's the escape pod. Is he all right? Oh, let's have a look. Mother, what's the atmosphere like out there? Let's see now. Pressure 1.2 kilos per metre cubed. Temperature 289 degrees Kelvin. Atmosphere 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen. You've still got space suits or have they gone missing too? You shouldn't need more than a scarf, Charlie, dear. It's exactly the same atmosphere as Crichton at this time of year. Oh. Oh, 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 289 degrees Kelvin. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, that should be fine, yeah. Uh, Okay, well, I'm switching you over to headset mode, Mother. I do so hate that. So undignified. After you, Moog. Thoth? Thoth! Well, he's not in the pod. He must have gone into that office building. I've got a bad feeling about this place, Moog. Mm-hmm. It's a dark, foreboding den of hidden mysteries that human minds may never comprehend. Yes. What inconceivable purpose could it possibly serve, mm. floating here in this empty, unwelcoming void? It's a lost property office. What? That'd be ridiculous. He's right, Charlie. It says so on this side. What? No, that, that, that just coincidentally looks like writing. It'll be some unintelligible alien hieroglyph. Let's see. Brr. Des objects truths. See? It's meaningless. Well, um, shall we go in? Look, there's a welcome mat. Careful. It's probably some kind of alien trap. Come on. It's fine. Look, there's some sort of hideous alien behind the counter. Right, leave this to me. Greetings, alien. We come in peace. Who are you <laughs> to call me alien? He's French. What? Of course he's not French, Moog. It's just coincidence he sounds like that. Where are you from, alien? Marley Le Roy, dans les banlieues de Paris. He says he's from the suburbs of Paris. How can you understand alien language all of a sudden? I am French, you idiot. What do you mean you're French? How can you be French? So typical of your English arrogance. Many humans are employed across the galaxy. I was recruited to manage this office 
for my special bureaucratic skills. Um, I think a little alien we were looking after may have come in here. We were wondering if you'd seen him. I don't have to. No, 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 yeah, we, we appreciate that. It's just that we've lost... Do the... you have Form 32C? Uh, uh, no, no. You see, we were just passing and our escape pod sort of came down here and the little alien on board... Have you applied for the authorization no, code? You see, no, no, you see, we don't have any forms. We just... You must have the correct form. Look, it's quite simple. Couldn't you just get us a... I don't have to. Oh, oh calm down. Calm down, Charlie. <sighs> let, let me try. OK, hello. Where can we get one of these forms? I can give you one. Uh Uh-huh. There you go, Charlie. It's fine. Between 9 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. But, oh, merde. Look at the time. Uh, She is 12.31. I am so sorry. Fine, fine. I've had enough of this. Cork can come and get him if he's that bothered. Ah, no, 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 English. No. There is to be no living without a form 375B. What? Yes! I am sorry, but these are the rules. Charlie, the door won't open. Listen, mate. My passport has some pretty stiff words to say about no let nor hindrance. So, unless you want the full and mighty wrath of Her Majesty's Royal Navy in here... Maximilien, would you please explain to these English the way the rules work? Master. Uh, uh-oh. Well, I'm sure we can sort this out amicably. <laughs> Oh, my God, it's got egg whisks for hands. Charlie, dear, you look like you're in a spot of bother. It's not really the time, Mother, thanks. Oh, dear, will you be so good as to switch me on to loudspeaker? Mother, it's a bit late for that. Um, French lost property man, this is, uh, Mother. Hmm. Mother, this is French lost property man. How do you do? Now, what seems to be the problem? Ah, madame... You see, there is really nothing I can do. These boys are subject to the universal law of bureaucratic inertia. It is out of my hands. I see. So you store things that are lost here, do you? And they can't be let out until someone comes with the right form. This is exactly so. But these English amateurs, they do not have the right forms. So... Yes, they are very naughty boys. Mother, I don't think you're helping. Quiet, dear. Now, it sounds like they deserve everything they get, so I won't stand in your Uh, way. Mother! Maximilian! But just before you do that, I was wondering if you could tell us exactly where this office is. Excusez-moi? But uh, why do you need to know? Oh, I know where we are. I just wondered if you did. Exactly. Well, of course. I, uh... We are in the black hole on the edge of the Epsilon system. The coordinates? <laughs> and the uh, detail, I do not know this. Uh, enough! Uh, Maximilian! You don't know where we are, do you? To put it another way, you are... lost. Ridiculous! Maximilian! Maximilian, you know what to do with lost property, don't you? Lost property must be indexed and locked in the warehouse. Very good. Maximilian, stop. Huh? Ignore her. Lost property must be indexed. No! Listen, what? Put me down. Stop, you English. Uh, You may not open the warehouse door. Okay? Okay, you've opened the warehouse door, but you may not go through it. Okay, you're going through, but 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 you will return immediately. I will not be ignored, Maximilian. Put me down. Wow, this place is huge. It stores everything that's been lost in the entire galaxy: biros, gloves, coins. Hey, they're my gloves. I'm having them. So this is where all our missing stuff's been going to. That's Lord Lucan. Hello there. What's that behind? Oh my god! So many socks! A constellation of them, glittering like diamonds in a forgotten cave. Uh, I don't suppose you'd care to help me? Sorry, I can't stop. My socks! My destiny! I'm home! Charlie! Charlie! We've got to look for... Oh, I'll do it myself. Thoth! Thoth! Where are you? Don't just run off, Mook. There's a perfectly simple index. Socks under H for hosiery. Let's try over there under T for Thoth. Ah. Uh, Teaspoons, trainers, treacle. No, he's not here. It's Christmas Day in Sock Heaven! Mother, what about N for nephew? I don't think he'll be indexed under that, dear. Well, we may as well try it. 
Needles, noodles, nephews. Me, 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 me. I'm sorry, Jasmine. We can only take soft. Soft. Are you in there? What coat? Ah, oh, there you are. What coat? Come along now, you hairs. Quite worried. Now, don't you ever go running off like that again. You hear me? Yes, mother. Now let's get Charlie and get out of here. Come on, Charlie! But all those socks! You've taken loads! But there are so many more! Let's leave them for the next sock-crazed space journalist who comes through here looking for his boss's nephew. Leave me here while you get all the rest of our missing um, stuff. I don't think we're going to find it here. Come on, let's go! <sighs> Will you carry some of these for me? Death to Violators! Uh, oh no! It's Maximilian! Death to Violators! In a rage of bureaucracy! No! You should have left me with the socks! Uh, it was the job, Smoke. Good idea! Death to Violators! Whisk error 4792! Incompatible gloves! Whisking capabilities nullified! You have bested me in combat. You are my new master. Cool. I've got a robot. Come on, grab Thoth. We need to get him to nursery. Well, that's Thoth safely off at the crash. That should keep Korg off our backs. How's your report coming along? Oh, I'm stuck on a point of grammar. I started with property colon. But uh -huh. You see, now I'm thinking the colon doesn't really get across the mm. bourgeois futility of ownership. Mm -hmm. What about property comma? Mm. Yeah. Well, it's probably just as well. I've got you an interview with the new owner and ruler of Earth. Hmm? What do you mean? Why are you wearing ermine? This old thing. It's just something Mother threw together for me. She hasn't finished the crown yet, but I suppose I did ask for quite a lot of rubies. Oh, sorry, Mother? When my clothes went missing and you said you could make me some, I ended up with a one-piece romper suit made out of mismatched socks. How come when Moog wants to play dressing up, he gets a Louis XIV costume? Well, he is king, dear. King of what? Well, while you were working on your one-word essay... <laughs> Two-word. One word and one punctuation mark, Moog was bidding on Space Bay to save Earth from falling into alien hands. What? Um, I didn't want to worry you with the details at the time. I had to sell quite a lot of stuff. What stuff? Your clothes, sock collection, a few bits of equipment. All like... my stuff? I, I noticed nothing of yours got sold. Well, your stuff was more valuable. But the important thing is Moog stopped an alien buying Earth. Well, that might not have been so bad. Of course it would have been bad. You know what aliens are like. They'd probably use it for breeding saber-toothed mega monkeys or something. Oh, not them again. You remember the song? Yes, I do. Saber-toothed saber mega, mega monkeys, monkeys are not real. I, I must not lie and I must not steal. So, we now own the Earth, huh? Yes. Hey, we can make them recite my poetry. Mm. Here we'll create a new world order modelled in my own image. And only the best ones will be allowed to procreate and... and Charlie, uh, dear, what have I told you about being a Nazi? Ah, don't, don't be, be a Nazi, Nazi. They're, they're not nice. nice. They, they all suffer from pubic nice. lice. Sorry, Mother. How much did it cost? Well, that's not really the point, is it? I saved the Earth from demented alien zookeepers. How much did it cost? Well, I saved How the... much did it cost? Two hundred pounds. <laughs> Two hundred pounds? What? Where are we going to get that kind of money well, from? Well, I know, but I'm sorry, but I've nearly raised enough. Call on line one. OK, uh, action stations. Uh, forget the report. I'll interview the new owner of Earth. <gasps> this will be the first true thing we've ever reported. OK, you stand over there, Moog. I'll stand here doing my piece to camera. Yes. I have heard from the nursery that my nephew arrived safely. The good news is that I can still have you killed for not providing a decent report. I trust you haven't got one. Actually, I think you'll be rather surprised this time, Mr. Korg. I don't like surprises. Unless it's that you've successfully contracted something terminal. Prepare to be impressed. Tonight's report contains an exclusive interview with the new owner of the planet Earth, Mr. Moog Johnson. Hello. <laughs> so, um... So, so what's, it, what's it like, then, owning, uh, owning Earth and all that? Well, it's all right, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like... Stop this at once! Do you mean to tell me that this 
Moonface uh, Simpleton uh, owns the earth. I bought it fair and square this afternoon. Indeed. And what with? I sold a few things and raised enough to buy... I trust you sold nothing owned by Intergalactic News. Well, I... Because, of course, that would mean it would in fact be I who owned the Earth. Well, of course, we, we were made... I'm bearing someone over to pick up the deeds and ensure you repay the network for the misappropriated equipment. Maximilian, reporting for duty. What's he doing here? I picked this security droid up on Space Bay. Hand him the deeds and await your punishment. Um, this was not in our contract. Have you read them? Well, no, but... Clause 7B. No, no, I'm, I'm not falling for this. I've got my contract right here. All right, let's see. Yeah, clause 7B. Yeah, 7B. If employees are responsible for the loss or damage of IGN equipment, their line manager may punish them by any means necessary, including torture by a possibly demented security droid. Finishing of gold. Space Hacks was written by Stuart Sumner and Ian Simons and featured Dan Mersh as Charlie, Tim Key as Moog, Prinella Scales as Mother, Dan Tetzel as Cork, and Jot Davis as Claude. The music was written by Ben Walker and the producer was Victoria Lloyd. I'm not a yoke! Game of hide and seek? Nah. Uh, game of guess my fingers. You like that? Who's got the fingers? Is it me? Don't really feel like it. Yeah. We can make a camp. Nope. Oh, well, I give up then. There's no pleasing you today. Well, when are we going to go and do some reporting, Charlie? We're supposed to be space journalists. Are you questioning my methods? W- what methods? You sit around until Korg demands a report, then you get into a flap and wait for me to bail you out. Yeah, those are my methods. It's all part of my charm, part of the enigma that is Charlie Palmer. It's all carefully planned to bring down the media propaganda empire. I need to get out there and do something. All right, look. We're both adults, yeah? We're men. Yes. Well, there's only one way to settle this. <laughs> if I win, we stay here. <laughs> you win... We get out there. You can't mean... Oh, yes! It's just that we've only just repaired the windscreen. Yeah, well, I'm much calmer now. Okay, if you're sure. Just don't get angry if I win. Goal! You know, I had the strangest dream last night. Yes! Dreamt I was a Viking or something. Uh, no, it was Thor. Oh, that's right, yeah, it was... Moog. How come you know my dreams? Um, well, offside! I, it can't be offside, it's table football. Yeah, I wasn't ready. I've, I've got sand in my eyes. You were breathing too much. Charlie, you're getting that pumping vein thing in your temples. Look, it's 5-0 to me. We could stop now and call it a draw. Bring it on, tough guy. Your luck won't... Woohoo! I win! We're going to the stars! Um, sorry, I mean, well played. It could have gone either way. Space Hacks, by Stuart Sumner and Ian Simons. Episode 3, The Last Postman. Hi, Mother. You beat me again. Not table football again, dear. You'll know how you get. You're just so smug. I mean, doesn't he realise the decent British thing to do when you win is climb into a cupboard and stay there until everyone's forgotten about it? There's no need to take it so seriously. I don't. Well, you put your head through the windscreen last time, which is fairly serious, isn't it, dear? Well, it needed replacing anyway. Never mind, Julian. It's not your fault you're not as skillful as Moog. Julian? Who's Julian? I'm Charlie, remember? Of course you are. I- I'm sorry, Charlie. I-, I don't know what came over me. Anyway, I'm very dexterous. I was founder of the school dexterity club. You're talking to the Kaplunk champion from 1986 to 1988. OK, well, how about a nice jam roly pony? Great. Mm. Oh! Mother, this isn't jam, it's liver. Really? Oh dear, that's odd. So, tell Moog to get in costume and meet me in the studio. 
All right, Charlie? You're looking angry. I don't get angry. So you found out about the photographs. Listen, you were asleep, and I was just trying the camera out. What what photographs? Uh, Nothing. Um, shouldn't we start this stupid report, then? It's not stupid, it's news. It's not news. You made it up. Ah, but what's the truth? If we all believe a lie, does it not become truth? Charlie, no one believes it. You don't believe it. I'd love to believe it, but I'm the one wearing the fake giant gnat costume. You've reused last week's giant mutant leak outfit for the antennae. You look fine. You just, just jump around and act oh, scary and I'll do the talking. It'll full call. I'm just saying. There'll be some sort of karmic retribution for this. You can't mock the insect kingdom and expect to get away with it. Laundry on line one. Shall I patch it through? Did she say laundry? D- d- quick, Mooch. Do your thing. But I'm not wearing the cape. Improvise. Um... Pathetic earthlings. It is I, Korg, and I hate you. Yeah, yeah. Ah! Korg, just in time, I've captured this fearsome gnat. Ah! Ah, oh, Mr. Moo. Interesting trousers. Ah. I hope for your sake, Charlie Palmer, that this is not an attempt at a report. Oh, well, uh, growl! On no. my planet, we have a saying for people like you. You are not very good. It is not so snappy in translation. One day I shall rejoice in your death by sucking out your eyes through a straw. Until then, the network needs another article on slug mating techniques. Our readers found your last six reports most stimulating. Not another one. There's only so much you can write about gastropod sex. Would you rather work on my other project? We want a first-hand account of being turned inside out. I need one or the other by tomorrow at eight. Call out. I can't believe he didn't go for the giant gnat story. Yep, it's almost as if he expects us to get out there and do some actual reporting. <laughs> I'm going to go and change... This ball gown's really chafing. Yeah. Mother, are there any biscuits? Actually, I'm not cooking anymore, dear. Really? My baking software seems to be corrupted. Are you OK, Mother? Well, I, I'm a little itchy. <laughs> uh, what, are we supposed to oil you? Change your water or something? I'm a biomesh supercomputer, not a goldfish, thank you, dear. Uh, if you're sure. What's that smell? I'm cooking. I'm exercising my creative bent. Oh, it smells like it needs a rest. Mm, This is good old-fashioned home cooking. Good, honest country fare. Turkey burgers? Who told you that? I've got the packet here. It says, mechanically recovered meat. That's disgusting. It's even got meat in inverted commas. Look, if it once belonged to an animal, it's meat. Well, you can never get me to eat that. No, technically I could... When somewhere in this infinite universe there's an exact same situation as this where I give the alternative Mooga turkey burger and he eats it. Mm, I wouldn't. No, you would. It's an infinite universe. Anything can happen. Hmm. So, like, there's a place where I'm in charge and you're my bitch? Well, that's not really what it's about, is it? It's more about the thing with Shakespeare and the monkeys. Oh. Isn't that how humans first got AIDS? <laughs> no! I'm talking about infinity, you know. Over an infinite period, a monkey will eventually type up the complete works of Shakespeare. You must have heard of that. Do you think that's how he did it? Oh, you've missed the... Yeah, all right, yeah, that's how he did it, yeah. What have you got there? Hmm? It's just a bit more junk mail. We Hmm. are looking for properties like yours in this area. I doubt they'd want more spaceships disguised as hedges. What, What do you mean, junk mail? Where'd you get it? It was in the porch. On a spaceship, we call it an airlock... Anyway, how have we got junk mail? We're incognito. I don't know. I guess the postmen have found us. We've been discovered! There'll be scientists and news crews and scientists and probes. What is it with you and probing? That's what they do. Oh, look, we need to find out who it's coming from and what they know. I'll solve it. I'm good with mysteries. You struggle with jigsaws. This is serious, Moog. I'm a dark horse. You're no dark horse. You're a man of simplicity. You like happy tunes and dogs called Ben. Look, I'm going to go chicken with Mother, see if she knows anything about it. Hi, Mother. Listen, we've got a problem. Is it about those photographs, dear? No, 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 it's nothing to do with any photographs. Why does everyone keep saying that? What are these photographs? You remember, Julian, the ones of the Pope shaving. Mm, Julian again. Look, I'm fairly technical, Mother. If you tell me which bit to kick, I'm sure I can fix you. Nothing wrong with me, dear. Anyway, look, we've been getting junk mail. Someone obviously knows we're here. That's nice, dear. You will wrap up warm, won't you? What? I mean, when they come to drag me off to their secret lab? This is the end, Mother. They're going to come with chainsaws and long, bulbous probes. All right, Mother... Charlie, listen, I've solved the mystery. You've worked out how they found us? Yep, it's the ants. Ants? What ants? You'd better come and see. What? <laughs>
now, where was I? Ah, oh, yes, yes. Self-destructing 199, 98, 97. There you go, look. And they're carrying all the junk mail through the crack in the door. Oh, they're cute. Cute? D- d- sorry, doesn't it bother you that the outer door of our spaceship lets ants in? Not really. We never go anywhere anyway. What do you mean? We went and saw that black hole. Well, it was black, we didn't see it, but, you know. I suppose so. Anyway, well, come on, let's have a look outside. <laughs> What's going on? There's millions of them. The line goes on for miles. Let's follow it. Yeah, you're all right. After we've killed these ones, obviously. Charlie, you mustn't murder ants. Huh? Oh, fine, we'll find some other way. Great. I'll go and get my recorder. <laughs> That's right, you little buggers. Welcome to Charlie Palmer's Circus of Boiling Pain. Take a ride on the kettle carousel. Roll up... Charlie. B- Mook, where did you come from? You're boiling the ants to death, you insecticidal maniac! Look, they're just ants. They're getting into the machinery and everything. give them a chance. I think I can convince them to leave of their own accord. Fine, OK. You've got two minutes to persuade them to stop gnawing through the inner workings of the ship before I carry out tiny, tiny genocide. <laughs> OK, hang on. Doesn't look like recorder music is their thing. What are you doing? You remember the Pied Piper? I thought we could encourage them out humanely. That wasn't humane. That was trying to gnaw its own head off. All right, well, what kind of music do you think ants get down to, then? Don't ask me, it's your theory. OK. Well, they should be able to hear my headphones if I hold them close enough. All right. What are you going to play? I don't know. Reggae. Reggae. Ants don't like Reggae. They're regimented, methodical, hard workers. I need something more structured, you know, like a uh, verse, chorus, middle eight verse. The know. Beatles. Oh, you're having a laugh, aren't you? They're mortal enemies. All right, that's just a thought. Adam and the Ants. Yeah, well, that's worth a try. Hey, that one's definitely following the headphones. Yeah, yeah, I think that's because there's jam on the earpiece. You know, we could just make them follow jam. You haven't got enough headphones for that. Yeah. Final stage of countdown. Ca- ca- Great, it's like New Year. 17, 16. What are you doing? What's she counting down? I don't know, maybe the jam tarts are nearly ready. That's not jam tarts, that's a self destruct timer. Quick to the computer room! Self destruct in. Nine. Quick, unplug her, find the off switch. Um, well, what if we just ask nicely? Mother, Six. could you not blow us up, please? Too late. I think it's a good last word. Um, death or glory? What? Those are my last words. You can't use them. I've just used them. What am I going to say now? Well, how about... Three. Oops, I've wasted my life. Two. <laughs> Has she stopped? She's gone offline. We're saved! Excellent! Can I have a celebratory cookie, please, Mother? Um... Mother? I'm, I'm afraid she's gone, Moog. Well, fix her, Charlie. Well, I'll do what I can. Look, let's check out her processing core. Stand back, Moog. It uh, gets a bit technical from here on in. Mm. Um, are you sure you know what you're doing? Yeah, it's fine. It's just like repairing a toaster, but, uh, you know, larger. Mm. Only that toaster never did work again, did it? Jesus. Look at that. What's that? The central processing core. Is it? All I can see is a bunch of ants. Exactly. They're they're nesting in there. Oh, no wonder she's broken. I told you. It's karmic retribution. You mocked insects, and now you're paying the price. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a simple place for you, isn't it, Moog? Yes. You do something good, you get cake. Do something bad, you get plagued by insects. Look, let's follow the line of ants outside. What, you mean leave the ship? You have to. I won the bet, remember? Oh, bugger. All right, then. Actually, can I have some cake? No, you've been bad. Come on. Look! Look, they're disappearing into that massive hatch under the bush. I never did go for Attenborough's muddy nest theory. Ants have too much class. I'm scared, Charlie. It's all right. It's all right. It's just a strange underground lair in the middle of the common inhabited by ants. 
which no one's ever noticed before. But they might eat my face off. Don't worry, just follow me. I'm in charge. I thought I was the leader. No, Moog, you lack essential leadership skills. I lead from behind. That's not leading, that's following. You don't even know when you're following me. That's how I wield my power. Power? You couldn't even wield a salami. What's that sound? That's chanting. They must be voodoo ants. Oh, that doesn't sound like ants to me. It's going from behind these curtains. Here, let's take a peek. Wow. My God, they're postmen. They're bewitching the ants to deliver the post. Shh, 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 shh. Don't let them hear us. Wait till the RSPCA hear about this. Yeah, I, I don't think they've got an insect division. No, we need to take care of this ourselves. Wait a minute. There's a cage on a little plinth. I can't believe this. What? Well, there's some sort of larger ant trapped in there. That's not just a larger ant. Look. Look what it's wearing. It's got a little tiara. It's the ant queen. They've got a hostage. That's why the ants are working for them. We have to rescue her, Charlie. Yes, but how? I mean, look at the postman. I mean, there must be half a dozen of them. Uh, we'll have to come up with some kind of distraction. Just as well I brought your MP3 player, then. Let me see. Postman music. Have you got letters from America by the Proclaimers? Moog, if it didn't work on ants, it's not going to work on a gang of hardened postmen. Uh, we're going to need a more aggressive strategy. Look, we can't sit around here talking about it. Let's go back to the ship. So what are we going to do, Charlie? The ants are still all over the place. We've got no food. Mother's broken. And Korg's going to kill us if we don't have a report by tomorrow morning. I'm going to go to my room and have a long think about it. I don't want to be woken up, all right? Can't come up with anything with you constantly yapping at me. Well, I'm not just some sort of cute, fluffy pet, you know. I know, I know. I'm just stressed. Why don't you go to your hutch for a lie down? Hutch? Sorry, room. I said room. OK. Well, you have a good long think. Don't worry about me. I've got my own project I can be getting on with. That's right, Charlie. Dream away. Say cheese. Smile at the birdie. Your France's biggest fop strolling through Versailles. No, shh. Shh. Back to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Close your big fat grey eyes. What's going on? Where am I? Mook? Hello? Moog, why am I dressed as a 17th century French king? Um, I was about to ask you the same thing. Is that a camera? What's going on? You dressed me up as Louis the 13th. The 14th, actually. Bigger hair. Moog, the thing I'm angry about isn't which king you dressed me up as. Well, look, it's time to get up anyway. There's loads to do. I'm not going anywhere in these pantaloons. Where are my trousers? They exploded. Mother's laundry programme went wrong. I've got last night's Chairman Mao costume, if you like. Last night? How often does this happen? Not often. Just... Whenever you're asleep. What have you been doing? I mean, look at me. You've even stuck a beard on. Mm -hmm. Actually, it looks quite good on me. Hang on. Is this real hair? Where'd you get it from? Well, you know the soap in the bathroom? Oh, that's disgusting. Oh, look, I can't get it off. What do you use to stick it on? Nothing. It just sort of stuck. Oh, OK. Well, we haven't got time for this now. Hang on. This outfit gives me an idea, though. Have you still got Chairman Mao's cap? Yeah. It's here. Oh, good. Right. What do I look like now? Someone that shouldn't really be allowed near children. No, I'm the Postmaster General. Brilliant! Why? I'll explain later. Quick, to the ant cave. You know, for a weird cult that lives in the woods, they got a really good sound. Are you sure this is going to work, Charlie? Have you got a better plan? Now's the time. OK, we wait until they're all asleep, then build a rudimentary Moog. flamethrower. Moog, I was being rhetorical. Yes. We're doing my plan, all right? Let me introduce you to a good friend of mine. The element of surprise. See, they have no idea they've been discovered. We are shadows in the dark. Wraiths in the moonlight. Spect... Ow! You're right, that beard Ow. stuck really well. I'll stop tugging it, you'll oh. give us away. Anyway, it works with my costume. Right, now here's the plan. I go in there, the postman all bow down. You nip in, take her insect miss, and we leg it back to the ship. Great. So... It's quite important that they don't see us until you're ready to reveal yourself. Yep, that's the plan. So, what about this guy behind us? Who dares violate the sacred ceremony of the postman's mass? Uh, um, God! Wait, wait, wait. wait. Um, 
It is I, your Postmaster General. I am here to conduct my inspection. Right. Wow. OK. Right. Well, back up. Uh, yeah, um, welcome, sir. Uh, and you have brought your pet. How sweet. Oi! Watch your letters or I'll have your leg. You don't look much like your photo, sir. I'm, I'm sure your beard wasn't that short and curly. Charlie, there's someone coming. Hang on. That's the real Postmaster General. Arrest the imposters! Charlie... I don't want to moan, but we've got a report to do, mother to fix and a cult to destroy, and we're locked in a dungeon. Can I hand in my notice? Don't worry, it's under control. Hey, Jaina! Michael. What? The name's Michael. I don't call you prisoner, do I? OK, Michael. That's Mr Skeets to you. Fine, Mr Skeets. What are you going to do with this? You're going to be sorted. That doesn't sound too bad. <laughs> no, it's not too bad. They put you into the sorting machine. It rearranges you alphabetically. Your Adam's apple and your ankles come first, then your breastbone and your bottom. <gasps> Towards the end, there's your teeth and your teeth. Charlie, get us out of here! Don't worry, Moo, we've got a duel in a battle of wits. This will be easy. Look, uh, can you just let me out to use the toilet? I promise I'll come back. <laughs> I ain't falling for that. Um, quick, quick, my friend's sick. He, he needs a doctor. Lie down, Moo. No, I'm OK, actually. <laughs> we haven't had a good sort in ages. Oh, this is going to be great. It's no use. We're going to die. Wait, Charlie, I've got an idea. Give us a pen. What are you doing? Oi, oi, stop writing on me. Shh, I've got a plan. Oi, jailer. I mean, excuse me, Mr Skeets. I've got a package here that needs delivering. What's that? Package? It's outsized. Is he calling me fat? Shh, be quiet and get delivered. Right, let's have a look then. Hmm. Outside the underground lair, Clapham Common Freedom. That'll be £2.20, please. There you go. My life savings. <gasps> oh, blame you, Tervy. Um, I'll give you a hand. What is it, anyway? It looks like some loose sacking covered in pubes. Oi! Shut up, Charlie. We're escaping. Right. Nearly there. Stop. Jailer. Michael. Michael? Mr Skeets. Uh, throw him in the sorting machine. <gasps> I'm tired of his... Nonsense. Yes, sir. Postmaster, Postmaster General. What? Oh, oh, no, not a sword machine. Oh, thanks, oh, no. Ah, and our little prisoners making a daring escape. Bring them to me. Wait, wait, wait. I need to be delivered urgently. Your French trickery will not work on me. I'm not French. Then why do you have pubes on your face? No matter. Your time has come. You have been caught trespassing at the sacred postman's mess. You will be sorted. But first, there is the formality of your trial. You may challenge me to the game of your choice from my collection. I have Operation, Buckaroo, Hungry, Hungry Hibbo. Kaplunk! Ah, a good choice. A game of dexterity. Let us begin. Charlie, be careful. It's okay, Moog. I'm a champion at this. Oh, dear. Such an early loss. Coordination is evidently not your strong point. Wait, wait, wait. I wasn't ready. You were breathing Into the sorting machine Mike. with them. Wait! This game's got an address on it. Timmy Bendrill, 33 Smickers Close, Coventry. And this one, Hilary Glanville, 25 The Smots, Canterbury. You've taken these games from delivery batches. Uh, nonsense. Throw them into the machine at once. Oh, no, no, let me see this, let me see this. It's true. These have been taken from deliveries. He has violated the secret postman's code. Always wear a hat. No, no, the other one. Always deliver. No postman is above the code. Not even our postmaster general. Wait. No. I can explain. Throw him into the sorting machine. Go now. What? Oh, no, 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 no. The Postmaster General may have gone, but your sentence remains. Just a moment. If one of the postman's codes is always wear a hat, how come none of you are? <laughs> well, yeah, no, he, uh, he's right. He's right. We are all code breakers. Into the machine with a lot of us. Come on, me first.
Come on, let's get out of here. Grab the Ant Queen, right behind you. Come on, Queenie! Right, time for the Queen to do her thing. <laughs> See that column of ants coming out the mainframe? Yes. Right, put her down next to that. <sighs> so what happens now? We wait. We wait and we hope. For what? Well, for the Queen to tell them they don't need to work for the evil postman overseers any longer. Could take a while. They are ants, after all. Yeah, then we wait. Like icy statues on a frozen lake. Like stalagmites in a forgotten cave. Like overstarched socks right. in Right. A... They've gone. Oh, really? Hello, dears. Would you like a sandwich? It worked! Mother's back! All right, Mother. Poor things who haven't eaten for hours. How about some nice cookies? You can't work on an empty stomach. Work? Ah! Cork's report! We've got two minutes to write a 2,000-word report on mating slugs! Uh, you don't suppose a story about evil postmen blackmailing insects to deliver junk mail would make a story, do you? Hmm. No, you're right. Too unlikely. Mind you, that stuff you said about Shakespeare's monkey. Where did that queen go? There she is. Get her! We haven't got time for this. Now then, um, uh, Slug Mating Habits, Volume 7. The importance of foreplay. Many gastropods prefer to dive straight into the business... Got her! Now, if I carry her into the middle of the room... All the ants should follow her in. But we just got rid of them. What are you doing? Uh, many gastropods dive straight into the business... Uh, the latter stages of physical intimacy right. without first... Shh. Here they come. There must be millions of them. I'll set a camera up. All right, Moog. What are you doing? Well, if it takes millions of years for a monkey to type the complete works of Shakespeare, then it can't take that long for a couple of million ants to write a little article. Moog! It's still going to take a virtually infinite amount of time. And we've got one minute. Or well, maybe I'll be happy with bullet points. Uh, two slugs, soft lighting, baby slugs. Right. Yes. It looks like a pattern's emerging. That group of ants looks like a letter N. Oh, fantastic. Oh, great. A whole letter already. Well, that's progress. Oh, no, that was just a squiggle. Call coming through on line one. Right, we're dead. Fantastic. They formed a whole article with a bibliography and graphs. What? They have. Hurry, take the photo before they move. One second. Hmm. Better check the aperture settings. There's no time! Where's the manual? Ah! Humans, do you have the report? Say cheese, little ant. I have been waiting for this moment. Mr. Palmer, in the interest of scientific knowledge, would you like to turn yourself inside out, or shall I beam over and help you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No need, Korg. Mother, patch over the report, would you? Certainly, dear. And the cookies are ready. Stand by. Beaming over to kill Mr. Palmer. Hold on. I have received the report. Hmm. On first appearances, it actually looks acceptable. Thank you. Told you it would work, Moog. No, you didn't. Today you live, Charlie Palmer. Next time, though... I shall burst you like a balloon. Cork out. That worked out well, then. Korg's off our case. Mother's back to normal. You've worked out your differences with the insect kingdom? Yeah, I can't believe it all. Oh, bin all that junk mail, will you, Moog? Wait! This one's addressed to me! Ah! <gasps> you have won first prize for the funniest historical fancy dress photo. Hey, look. You do make a great Thor. Oh, yeah. Hey, I like what you did with the breastplate. So you're not angry? No way, look, I've won some trousers. Uh, no, I won them. I took the photos. Yeah, of me. You were asleep. Oh, uh, all right. Decide it over a game of table football? Oh, I'm not sure. Of course, you'll uh, have to wear this. A blindfold? Yeah, it's only fair. Oh, all right. Ready? Hmm. OK, I'll give you that one. But from now on, no more Mr Nice. <laughs> Yes! Woohoohoo! I win! Get in the cupboard. Huh? Close the door. Charlie? <laughs> Charlie, it's dark in here. <laughs> Charlie, what are you doing? <laughs> Charlie, dear, not the windscreen. <laughs> Space Hacks was written by Stuart Sumner and Ian Simons and featured Dan Mersch as Charlie, Tim Key as Moog, Prunella Scales as Mother, Dan Tetzel as Korg, and Jock Davis as the Postmaster General. The music was written by Ben Walker and the producer was Victoria Lloyd. Oh! Oh, that hurts.
You've got to admit, flying through space is a lot cooler than sitting on the common. It's not about being cool. We've got a duty to bring down the established media and let the common man speak freely. We can't do that flying around in space, actually reporting on useful stories. But I like flying around. Yeah, well, I like toast, but I never let it come between me and my principles. Hmm. What about that time you refused to tidy your room as a symbol of man's struggle against conformity? What about it? You tidied it as soon as Mother offered you a crumpet. That was different. Ah, this is great, though, isn't it? Just you, me and Mother taking a spin in the open void. Just floating around with the asteroids and fish. Fish? Like that one out there. The big silvery one swimming past. Oh, Moog, you're being ridiculous. You can't be a fish. They don't like outer space. You said nothing was impossible in an infinite universe. But yes, but fish don't have iron beam rockets at the back, do they? It's quite clearly reptilian. It's a fish! Mother, what's the definition of a fish? I really couldn't say, dear. There's a dictionary in the library. A dictionary? I'm on an intergalactic stealth ship built on advanced alien technology and the only place I can find a definition of a fish is in a book. Well, I'm sorry, dear. Perhaps settling childish arguments between co-pilots wasn't high on the designer's priorities. Well, I'm going to prove it's a fish. You are mean to him, Charlie, dear. It's not his fault he can't tell the difference between a homing beacon and a fish. Homing beacon? Yes, and it's not fair to tease him into thinking it's a reptile. No, no. Because I knew it was a homing beacon all along. Of course it's not a reptile. (laughs) Is it? No. No, I knew that. So, um, this homing beacon then, uh, any idea why it's there? Well, it's probably home, dear. And and that other thing coming towards us, that probably isn't a reptile either? No, dear. A fish? I believe it's a hunter-class destroyer. Ah, no, I tell a lie. Hunters don't have missiles that big. It must be a privateer. In fact, according to its registration, it's quite a notorious pirate gang. Pirates? Pirates! They're coming straight for us! Take take a piece of action! Space Hacks by Stuart Sumner and Ian Simons. Episode 4, Mutiny on the Spaceship. Right, they gone? Charlie, dear, they're a pirate gang renowned for their tenacity and ruthlessness. All we've done is turn slightly left. Oh, that's it? We're doomed! Surely you can do better than that, Charlie. I thought you always said you were an unheralded military genius. Damn it. You're right, Mother. Send a transmission to the pirate ship. Tell them... I surrender fully and I'm very, very sorry. And that's being an unheralded military genius these days, is it? No, when you're beaten, Mother, that's the first rule. Right, if you need me, I'll be hiding in the airing cupboard. You know, I could just switch on the cloaking device. Of course! The cloaking device! I I mean, yes, that's what I meant all along. Um, Mother, switch on the cloaking device. Wonderful idea, Charlie. Device on. Oh, now that's odd. They're still coming towards us! The cloaking system doesn't appear to be functioning. You wouldn't be a puppet and ask Moog if he can see anything wrong with it, could you? Moog! Use the intercom, darling. We may be in mortal danger, but there's no need to raise your voice. Moog, are you still in the library? Get over to the engine room now and check the cloaking device is working. No need. I saw it a minute ago. It was fine. What what do you mean you saw it a minute ago? I needed somewhere to charge up my Pac-Man. I'm on level seven. Plug the cloak in now! We're under attack! But level seven, Charlie! No, Moog! Oh, all right. But they're still following us! Hmm. Something not entirely right about the cloaking device. Ah, yes, I see the problem. There we are. The system was stuck on H for a bit there. All clear now. They've flown straight past us. There you are, you see. No need to panic. Well, no offence, Mother, but that was a little too close for comfort. I'm switching the ship's controls over to manual. Next time, leave the emergency manoeuvres to me. You can look after the emergency cooking. Char, that's extremely naughty. Give me back the controls at once. Not until I've piloted us out of dangerous space, Mother. You're far too nervous a pilot for this sort of flying, Charlie. Remember that time you were flying and an asteroid nearly hit us? No, I don't remember that, Mother, and I don't need to be reminded. It took weeks for the seat to dry. Well, at least I didn't fly us into a pirate's den. How was I to know that? They don't leave signposts, dear. It's not marked on a map. Oh, go and bake some biscuits. Char! Right. Well, according to the dictionary, it's not a reptile. So who looks stupid now? Height, six foot, 
No, six foot four. Sod it, six foot six and built like Adonis. Looks. Um, Mother? Yes, dear? Would you say I was handsome? Of course you are, dear. You're a very handsome young man. Any girl would be very lucky to have a nice boy like you. I've got a good vibe about this one. She's called Yuck. She's been emailing for weeks and she wants to know more about me. Would you say I was devilishly handsome? Well, I'm not sure about that, but you must be careful, dear. I don't think these sites encourage total honesty. You could be talking to anyone. Devilishly handsome. I'm sure she's telling the truth about herself. She says she's a stunning, slim, but curvy ex-model with amazing, um, secondary sexual characteristics. What else should I say about myself? Yes, heir to a fabulous fortune and, um... Mother, do you think girls are interested in Pac-Man? No, dear. Mm, I'll just put ex-circus athlete. Should spice things up. I really don't think I approve of this, Moog. Hey! She sent a photo. She wasn't lying. She's gorgeous. Hi, Moog. Mother? Moog, tell Charles I'm not speaking to him until he apologises for his bad behaviour. Uh, Charlie, Mother said... Whatever. Hey, what are you looking at? Wow. Hello. Mm Mm-hmm. Amazing, uh... Yep. Secondary sexual characteristics. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, she's mine. Cork on line one, Moog. Revolting disappointment, Sax. I hear from my scouts that you've flown into bandit country. I'm disappointed you're not yet dead. I trust at least you have a good story for me. I'm afraid not. Uh, we found some pirates. <laughs> pirates? Well, that is interesting. The network has been short of crime stories since our law and order correspondent was forced to swallow his own face. No, no, we're not going anywhere near pirates who make you swallow your own face. Oh, it wasn't the pirates. His report was superficial and badly worded! You will capture undercover footage of criminal activity and edit it into a slot for tomorrow at six. Or swallowing your faces will be the least of your worries. Cool out. Oh! I told you not to say anything. Sorry, I got overexcited. I've never seen pirates before. Yeah, well, it's just as well I've got an ingenious plan. Ah, we have a small problem. I know, Mother. I'm dealing with it. So, if you want to do something useful, why don't you make some tea or something? Hi. Oh, Moog, it's not time for Pac-Man. This is serious. Shh, whoa, whoa, whoa. High score. Far be it from me to interfere. Really? Oh, not level eight. Blimey, what's up with the ghost? I'm on it, it, I'm on it. I know when I'm not wanted. Oh, no, Mother, get the pill, get the pill. It's just... What was that? Mother, are you all right? What's going on? Oh, nothing important enough to interrupt your work. It's simply that these alien pirates have just locked their ship onto our hull. I expect the drilling sound is them breaking through our airlock. Would you ask Charlie whether he wants one sugar in his tea or two? Charlie, Mother wants to know... I heard. Quick, into the airy cupboard. Okay, Moog, stay absolutely still and don't make a sound. Okay. How did they find us? I thought we were cloaked. They're pirates, Moog. They've probably got all kinds of specialised radiation sensors and cloak destabiliser arrays, that sort of thing. I reckon they just looked for a wobbly bit of space. Moog, come on. A little bit more complicated than that. Mm. Show yourselves. Space scum. Ah, now you must be the alien pirate we've been hearing about. Can I offer you a nice cup of tea? I care nothing for refreshments. I am here for your captain. I can do you decaf if it's past your bedtime. Yes! Yes! Aha! What have we here? It was him! I didn't do anything. I'm just... Don't kill me. I'll do anything. I'll be a little space monkey. Is that what you want? Little space monkey? Oh, do be quiet. How did you find us? There was a wobble of it in space. Why were you following me? Who are you with? The police? The Federation? <laughs> we're anarchists. Yeah, bringing down the Federation's propaganda machine through misinformation and uh, inactivity. Well, I... Guess you know who I am. <laughs> no, not really, no. Me neither. Oh, of course, the uh, the helmet. Just a moment. 
Now you must recognise me. Uh, <laughs> no, no, not, no really. not at all. I am the famous and dreaded space outlaw. Fenty Fenty Peak. <laughs> Fenty Fenty Peak. Yes. What of it? It's a fine, noble name. <laughs> On my planet, it means he who conquers worlds <laughs> and ravishes members of the opposite sex while still treating them with respect <laughs> and is prone to dismember anyone who laughs at his name. Um, so, um, so you're here to conquer us? No, I was hoping to steal from you, but it appears you have absolutely nothing of value. I thought you were supposed to be a conqueror of worlds, not just a thief. Ha <laughs> ha. I like your style. Thank you. I shall ravish you right now. But I'm a man. Are you? And anyway, you said you'd treat me with respect. Yeah, I did say that. Very well. I'll take my ravishing elsewhere. Anyway, you see, I am a good thief. Fenty Fenty Peak. Robber of the rich. Benefactor of the poor. Yeah, like a modern Robin Hood. <laughs> Never heard of him. Oh, come on, you must have done. The original socialist. I uh, actually wrote a poem about him if you're interested. Robin, robberin, the wood with your hood, so good. Wow, you're a free-form anarchist poet too. Uh, I'm a devotee of the muse myself. Uh, maybe you could give me some advice on my work. I, I mean, it's nothing in comparison to yours, but... Well, here goes. Okay. <clears throat> Space, so black, like a black mac. In a black knapsack. Look, Hiding don't mind me. I've like got something to do that involves kite. earplugs. And then there's a star, seen from afar. Looks like a little jar. Great. We're boarded by an alien pirate, and he turns out to be a frustrated poet. Your young lady friend has been emailing you again. Yuck! Oh, blimey. 17 messages. Quite keen. Dear Moog. You are the answer to my dreams. Ah, oh, sweet. I have always wished for a man with riches such as yours. Sounds interesting. Dear Moog, you haven't replied. Don't you love me? Maybe a bit forward? Why do you torment me with your silence? I shall always love you, even if you will not acknowledge me. I warned you, didn't I, Moog? You want to meet a nice girl in evening classes or something, not some sex-starved online psycho. Oh, I'm sure she's not that bad. What else has she said? Dear bastard. Maybe she's having a bad day. Dear Moog, sorry about the last message. I am chastising myself with a belt of thorns to atone. She's a bit up and down, really, isn't she? Message 17. And so, Moog, I have left my despised husband and await your imminent proposal of marriage to save me from the streets. Yours, yuck. Well, I'm not ready for that sort of commitment. Mother, what am I going to do? Listen to your mother in future. Your toes twinkling in the twilight through hosiery woven tight. Ah, oh. ah, oh, this stuff is dynamite. Oh, oh, yeah. Have you got any more? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm a published poet. Wow, I mean, publishers always send my stuff back. I, you know, I almost tried uh, vanity publishers, but I realised it was just a scam. No artistic integrity. Uh, I don't know about that. I mean, yeah, sometimes vanity publishing can be just the way to get noticed by, well, your friends, and then they tell their friends, and before you know it, four or five people have read it. Well, if the poet has to cover the cost, then there's no public validation, is there? Yeah, well, you know, they're all books, aren't they? I mean, those pathetic people who pay for their own stuff to be printed. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, here they are. <laughs> My life's work. Wow. There must be 20 volumes of the stuff. Palmer Publishing? They a big player on your planet? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Huge. Right. Volume 6. Mm. Musings on the irrationality of being, are oh, you? Yeah. Very profound. Mm. What does it mean? Well, it's not so much about what it means as that the words sound good. Oh. Anyway, there's, actually, there's a rather good one on, uh, on yep. page 874. Right. Uh, no, near, near the start. Oh, yeah, yeah, here we are. Yeah, yeah. Carrying the burden of being a genius by Charlie S. Palmer. It's a good title. Right. Um, may I read it? <laughs> if, if you must. I mean, it's well, rather embarrassing. Well, I don't have to. No, no, read it. OK. <clears throat> genius. So heavy, heavy like a bag of salt or malt. Such a burden on my shoulders, like a bag of boulders or cigarette holders. Oh, 
I'm sorry. That, that, that's beautiful. That's um, that's pure genius. I would kill to be a writer Don't. of books like these. Stop now, come on. No, really, I would. I, I want to be a poet just like you. Oh, God. You haven't got his books out, have you? Actually, Fenty asked to see them, and he thinks they're rather good. Uh, that genius, I think you said, didn't you? No, yeah. Just goes to show what a lack of appreciation I get round here. Maybe I'm wasting my time trying to be an anarchic journalist with you. I could join a group that fully understands me and wants to make a difference in the world. What? You don't mean become a pirate? Maybe. What do you think, Fenty? <laughs> Your work is masterful. I, I cannot leave without it. Yeah, there you are, you see. But I'm not so sure I need you as well. Ah. So if you would both um, be so good as to sit down next to this pillar, I'll just tie you up. I, 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 I thought you said you meant us no harm. I'm a pirate. What can I say? But there are two of us. Moog, remember the plan if we're ever attacked? I'm not sure there's time to dress up as an old lady, Charlie. No, 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 no. The, the other plan. Attack Formation Delta, Weapon Protocol 635. Um... Get behind him and leap on his back while I distract him. <laughs> you seem to forget my famed strength and girth. What use of destruction... Oh, fate! Your cruel eyes oh. like knives. Oh. Or bees in their little hives. Oh, such poetry. There. Such beauty. There. No. Must resist its power. How your mystery oh. makes me blistery. You blow a kiss to me. Now, Moog! Oh. So that was Attack Formation Delta. Yeah. It's a nice plan. <clears throat> Thing is, it doesn't really take into account our essential terribleness at fighting. Yeah. Budge up. I can't budge up. I'm tied to you and a pole. There. Now I'll just uh, <clears throat> take these books and retreat. A hundred thousand miles should uh, keep me safe from the explosion. What explosion? The explosion caused by the enormous missile we're about to fire at you. <laughs> Goodbye. And thank you so very much. So what do we do now? I think I might do some crying. Mother? Yes, dear? Any suggestions? I have absolutely no idea. You're tied rather professionally to that pillar. Unfortunately, Charlie switched the ship onto manual control, so I can't even try to dodge the missile. Mm. But then, of course, I'm just a biscuit machine, so what would I know anyway? Well, there must be some way out. I plan to be martyred in the name of poetry. Don't be so defeatist. Anyway, Fenty took all your poetry. You'll just be martyred in the name of failed journalism. Well, at least I tried. Better than being martyred in the name of being quite good at Pac-Man. I got to level eight! And I would have got to nine if you hadn't switched it off. Just so you know, the pirates have launched their missile. I'd say we've got about five minutes till impact. <laughs> Ah, another ship has docked with us. Oh, thank God, he's back. See, you must have seen sense after reading one of my poems about mercy. Uh, the kindness of a lion sparing a mouse. The compassion of an eagle freeing a grouse. Mercy, like a false beard. Mother, is there any way of hurrying that missile up? It doesn't look like a pirate on my scanners. What do you mean? Who else is it going to be? Mother, who else is it... Are you still not talking to me? Who is it, Mother? Well, Moog... It appears to be a rather attractive woman with an attention-seeking chest. Hello? Ah, you must be some of Moog's servants. When you've completed your bondage ritual, please tell him I'm here to accept his proposal. Yuck, it's me. I'm Moog. Quick, untie us. But you're barely five foot six. A devilishly handsome... Are you at least incredibly rich? He has a very nice personality, dear. I'm sure you could grow to love him. Never. I wanted a tall, handsome, rich, brave, passionately poetic man. Poetic? Poetic? I'm a poet! Hey, I'm handsome and brave. Take me! You are neither handsome nor brave. But a poet, you say? A word minstrel with the skill to unlock minds and transcend the mortal planes with lyrical melody. Exactly! You found me. Take me. I'm yours. But then, fundamentally ugly. Oh, what to do? Ugly? But given the circumstances, you will have to do. I shall untie you and take you as my sex slave as we experience erotic adventures and extreme poetry throughout the galaxy. Yes, finally! Oh, thank you, God. And me? I'll come too? Oh, I suppose I may need someone to take over when I exhaust the ugly one. See? Told you it would all work out in the end, Milk. Someone's just beamed into the transporter room. <laughs> Fenty! You came back for me! No. I just noticed this other ship docking and assumed you'd managed to call for help. And my, what delectable help you have, too. 
such secondary sexual characteristics. Aren't you Fenty Fenty Peak, the famous swashbuckling poetic heartthrob? You're aware of my work. I like that in a woman. Ignore him, Yech. We don't need him. I think I might love you. Wait, are you fabulously wealthy? Stupendously, my dear. Come here and be ravished to the point of medical emergency. Mm. Wait, yeah! Mm. What are you doing? Why are we hanging around with these losers when we could be sexing our way around the universe? <laughs> Fenty to ship, two to beam aboard. Oh. Well, that's brilliant, Mother. Why did you let him beam back? I thought he'd save you from that dreadful woman. Right. So, instead of flying across the galaxy experiencing new levels of ecstasy, I'm tied to a pole in a soon-to-be-exploding ship. Oh, that's great, Mother. Thanks. Well, I don't know if this is the right time to mention it, but I wasn't lying to Yuck about being an ex-circus athlete. Yes, yeah, actually, with minutes to go before we die, that's exactly what I was hoping to hear from you. Oh, do, do tell me all about your life's history, Moog. I'm fascinated. No, no, I mean, I didn't want to mention it before, but I'm a trained escapologist. You didn't want to mention it before? Well, it's quite painful contorting yourself into the right shape. I have to squeeze into a little cube. It takes hours to straighten out again, even with a hairdryer. Just do it! Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> Ah. Uh. Done it. That's amazing. I know. I was trained by a master contortionist. No, no, no. I mean, that you've made yourself so small, and yet you're still completely within the confines of the ropes. What? Oh, bugger. Well, that's it then, I guess. Goodbye, Charlie. Goodbye, Mother. It was fun. Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down there. It's not over yet. You've got a plan, haven't you? In a way, Moog. Hooray for Charlie! How are you going to do it? By immortalising us through verse. Oh. Oh, pathos. Thy beauty lies in the eye of oh. the meek. How bright the light bulb oh. in mercy's oh. cheek. Oh, I can't stand it. I must get free. Oh, that's nice. That's charming, yeah. Faced with certain death or listening to my poetry, it's the poetry that makes you escape. Don't complain. I'm free now. Now what? How do we dodge the missile? Ah, don't worry. I've got another plan. Mother, what now? That's your plan? Ask Mother? Yeah. You got a better idea? Yes. I'm going to get myself back into my normal shape. If your brilliant plan just happens not to work, I don't want to enter the afterlife looking like your baggage. Right. There. You're back on automatic, Mother. Now what? Is this really the end? Oh, Mother, for heaven's sake, I've given you the controls back. What more do you want? Look, I'm sorry, OK? Isn't that enough? It depends on whether you'll promise to show your mother some respect and not be such a naughty boy in future. Oh, I can't believe you do this just to make a point. I can't believe you're too stubborn to apologise. I didn't really do anything. We were just playing Pac-Man and... 20 seconds. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Sorry for what? I'll take you over the controls. And? And? Um, and, uh, and... And for saying you should stick to cooking. Good. Accepted. Switching on cloaking device. But the cloaking device, of course. The missile can't find us if we're cloaked. Oh, well, it couldn't if it were plugged in. <laughs> ah, that's better. Getting back to normal. Luke, did you unplug the cloaking device to plug in that hairdryer? Uh... Five seconds to impact. Death or glory! Ha! Beat you to it, Moog. Afterlife, here I come! Damn, that's quite good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, vision. Leaking. Uh, air leaking out. Space. Uh, leaking in. So cold. I can't feel my hands. Oh, what a waste of genius. Goodbye, Charlie. Goodbye, Mother. Goodbye. Cruel. Cruel world. Oh, don't be ridiculous, the pair of you. Lungs exploded. Hey, What do you mean, ridiculous? We're dying. Aren't we? Actually... Now you mention it, I don't feel too bad. This ship is designed for reporting in war zones. It can function in black holes, supernovae, pulsars. A simple missile just bounces off our shields. Uh, and you didn't think it might be worth telling us this before we got ourselves all overexcited, Mother? Well, I think it's good for you to work things out for yourselves once in a while. I won't always be here to bail you out, you know. You see what I mean, Moog? Incompetent. Well, she did just save our lives. Yeah, but a proper onboard computer would have let us know there was nothing to worry about and saved me a change of trousers. Instead, this glorified microwave here... I beg your pardon, young man. <laughs> Korg, on line one. What? But we're not ready. Um, uh, listen, Korg, um, you're not going to believe the day we've had. No doubt you're correct. 
So I suggest you shut up and send in your report on the pirates. Uh, uh, Mook, Mook, could you uh, just cover for me for a moment? I've just got to check something in the escape pod. Ha ha! You haven't written the report! Excellent! Stand by, beaming over to... What's this coming from? It's a report! Hmm. Pirates, no. Now that you're all good. Hostage situation. Nice. Failed to die. Shame. It's actually a, a very good report indeed. What? Did he say very good indeed? Yes. This work is outstanding. For once I ask for a report on pirate activity, and I get it. Um... A great shame you didn't explode in some ways, but our viewers will see it as a feel-good story. I shall console myself with the knowledge that your inevitable demise cannot be far away. Excellent. Well, um, I'm glad you're happy. <laughs> Mook, did you uh, secretly write a report in under four seconds without telling me? No. You must have done it. <laughs> you think I'd remember? I must be better than I thought. Yes, well, continue producing work of this quality. And I shall think about calling off the contract on your head. Oh, you, you flatter us, Mr. Cork. <laughs> but until then, I'd sleep with the light on. Cork out. Well, hey! So, we don't explode and Cork doesn't rip my pelvis out. That's quite a good day, really. Um, yeah. Where do you think this report came from, though? <clears throat> no, who cares? We got away with it. Again? <coughs> well, I'd like to find out. I mean, if it wasn't us, who could it possibly have been? <coughs> For goodness sake, Mother, take a lozenge or something. Oh, you ungrateful boys. It was me. And it's a good job I did your work for you, or right about now your boys would be eating your own faces. So it seems I can do more than just make the tea after all. Excellent. All right, well, now we've got that out of the way, I think, uh, I think I could manage a slice of Battenberg. Oh, me too. Great. Well, tea's all round, Mother. Time for some well-earned rest. Uh, what do you think you're doing? Well, I, I thought I might put my feet up for a bit and wait for my cake. Why? Well, Charlie, since I've saved your lives twice today, I think it's time you showed me a little gratitude. The oven needs scouring. With your fingernails. Oh, Mother. That's quite enough of that. Or do I have to tell Korg where his latest report came from? Oh, right. Mother. Space Hacks was written by Stuart Sumner and Ian Simons and featured Dan Mersch as Charlie, Tim Key as Moog, Prunella Scales as Mother, Dan Tetzel as Korg and Margaret Caborn smith as Yech. The music was written by Ben Walker and the producer was Victoria Lloyd. Fingernails? Expecting you back so soon. Have you been fired? No. The CEO is actually really nice. He said uh, he could tell we had potential and we'd been let down by a boss who didn't give us any training. So he demoted Korg instead. Oh, that explains why he turned up half an hour ago and locked himself in the toilet. <laughs> He's here. <laughs> He's going to be furious. <laughs> Are you, uh, you okay in there, Korg? My theory is he's quite annoyed about being demoted from news editor to toilet attendant. Yeah, well, that's the sort of character he is, though, isn't it? I mean, you know, he's nothing without his job. Not like me. I mean, demote me to toilet attendant, I'd see it as a chance to get in with the oppressed proletariat. Build myself back up to my natural position as their leader. Yeah, they'd soon be chanting my name. Banning all of the doctrines but mine. Adopting special salutes. Charlie, dear. Hmm? Nazis get sent to bed without any supper. Now go and wash your hands, boys. It's dinner time. Mr. Korg, will you be joining us? Korg, you, uh, gonna be joining us for dinner? I think he's sulking. When you look at it from his viewpoint, it probably doesn't look totally fair. Sorry, was it fair when he threatened to whip you with your own colon because you were late with the report? Ah, uh, but, ah, uh, he never actually did it, did he? I think deep down, he quite likes us. I will tear you apart with my bare claws. You know, really deep down. Space Hacks! Episode 5, Men in Brown. 
time is this to come knocking? Are we expecting anyone? Well, the CEO did say something about a replacement boss. Captain Graham Gray requests boarding stealth ship Indolent. Indolent? I didn't know we had a name. This is the Indolent to Captain Gray. We are undergoing complex maneuvers at present. Request postpone boarding. Maneuvers? What maneuvers? It's dinner time. Captain Gray to Indolent, repeat immediate boarding request. I am an alien on your planet, standing on Clapham Common, talking to a hedge. I am beginning to attract interest. Request postpone maneuvers. Indolent to Officer Gray, I can't. The puddings will deflate. Indolent, please describe current maneuvers. Well, if you must know, I'm about to serve my famous Sunday roast and the Yorkshire puddings will flop if you cause a draft with that door. Indolent override airlock security, Captain Gray boarding by force. Oh, now look what you've done. Ruined! You. Are you aware your computer is malfunctioning? Shh. Last time I said that, I didn't get any biscuits for a week. My predecessor was clearly far too lenient. You can bin that roast for a start. You'll eat standard ration protein paste from the waste recycler from now on. Right, you. Where are you up to in your training? Sorry, what training? I, I train him on the job. And who trains you? Me? <laughs> a man like me doesn't need training. I'm, uh, I'm beyond training. I'm, uh, I'm a visionary. Yeah, pearls of wisdom drop from me like... Uh, Emeralds of, of wisdom. And what stories are you developing at the moment? Right, well, we've got uh, an exclusive follow-up on our expose of Alan the Talking Star. Ah, uh, we can't. I split the crotch on my costume. Oh. There is to be no more dressing up. You will do things by the book. This book. <laughs> the general theory of everything by Captain Graham Gray. This is more than a book. It's a... Very large book. A way of life. I have encapsulated the entirety of everything in 200 chapters of formulae and diagrams. Now, now, now you can't encapsulate everything in a formula. I'm one of a kind. A unique snowflake. Page 4029, paragraph 3, Moog. Uh, yes, um... Here we are. Z equals x plus y, where x is delusions of uniqueness, y is poetic tendencies, and z is imbecile. S ah! So you're an imbecile, Charlie. Hey! You will read chapter 98, Journalism for Imbeciles. Now, I have an assignment for you. Regulations are being drafted that will affect federal tax law, and I want to report on the economic impact. In the meantime, I'll be reconfiguring your computer. I don't need to learn about journalism. I'm a social commentator, not a mere reporter. I see past the facts and relate the human angle. Our readers want facts, not yellow-suited simpletons pretending to be galactic bodies. So I don't need to dress up anymore. Brilliant. You have your task. Fail. And you shall answer with your lives. <laughs> Do you think he meant that about answering with our lives? Yeah, probably, but come on, call was worse. Every day it was, do this or I'll rip your what's it off with uh, a thingamy jig. Yeah, don't do that or I'll beat you with your own thingamabob. Oh, I don't know. Somehow I always got the feeling we'd come out all right with Korg. Captain Gray's got no... humanity. Huma Korg's a seven-foot green scaly lizard creature. Uh, yes, but you have to see past that, Charlie. I do. Past the outer lizard lies an inner lizard with an insatiable lust for blood. Ours. Yes, but past even that... Lies a craving for violence and a hatred for all life. At least he never wrote a book condensing the whole of life into a bunch of formulas. That's just creepy. Give it here. There, ah! Well, you're never going to read it! No! I'm going to flush it down the toilet. It's well-known knowledge dilutes genius. Well, I could do with a bit of actual training. Sorry, what do you mean, actual training? What's not actual about all the training I've been giving you? Well, you've sort of not... Actually, you've given me any. <laughs> That's a sign of great teaching, when the student doesn't even know he's being trained. It's also quite often a sign of not being trained. <laughs> I'm training you right now. Look, you don't even realise. Ah, oh, here we are. Book flushing time. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be fun. Yeah. Oh, 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 hi, Cork. Sorry, I forgot you were here. Uh, can, we, can I use the toilet? I have just cleaned it. Right, it's just this book. Mm. A little large, 
but no worse than what I unplugged this morning. Uh, sorry, yeah, uh, mother's cooking can be can be quite rich. <laughs> There we go. Oh, and uh, maybe also some uh, number ones. Very well. But if your aim is less than true, I shall shove this toilet. Uh, didn't the CEO say if you harmed us, you'd be demoted to paperweight? I would make it look like an accident. Picture the scene. You are about to use the toilet. You remove your trousers. You slip and fall, and suddenly you shatter into a million pieces of bloody pulp. Right, yeah, right, right, yeah. Um, I'd like to do this alone, if you wouldn't mind. I shall not leave my station. I'm a toilet attendant. Well, could you attend outside? No. I must listen for the toilet people. Cork, are you okay? The toilet people speak to me. Forget it. I'll go behind the tree. Sub Editor Palmer and Assistant Sub Editor Johnson entering the bridge, Captain Gray. Mother? Are you alright? I know everything hasn't been quite right with me, but I can assure you now, very confidently, that it's going to be alright again. I feel much better now, I really do. Now that my baking software has been erased. So. How are you getting on with my report? Well, I was thinking we take a bit of a sideways view. If tax law was a meal, what kind of wine would accompany it? Negative. I want facts. Cold, hard facts. <sighs> right. OK. Have it your way. I'm going to astound you. Here, yeah, here. Yeah. If it's facts you want, then by God, it's facts you'll get. We won't rest until we've researched every angle, covered every base, Trawled every source and moog. Can you switch off your radio? I can't hear myself think. Uh, sorry. Thank you. Right. Now start researching federal tax law and hand me my pen. <laughs> Captain Gray, I've finished the report. Hmm. I like federal tax law because it is nice, but not as nice as ice cream. Oh, oh no, sorry, uh, sorry, that's, uh, that's Moog's first draft. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, here's the real report. Federal tax law shining bright through the murky darkness like a beacon, not like bacon or a deacon. This is not a report, it is poetry. Oh, well, thank you, it's... Uh, it's Terrible, you. pointless poetry. Start again with facts. Okay, here's the new report. Hmm. Facts about federal tax law. One, it's law. Two, it's about federal tax. C, it's dull, dull, dull. Dull, 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 dull. Yes, again, please. We finished. Need sleep. Must rest. Ooh. Please. Clause 39 brings an interesting new angle to tax law for three main reasons. Yes. Ah, indeed. Ah, good. Better. Better. Oh. What the? But you said it was good! It was good, but it must be perfect. <laughs> Can't go on. Working so hard. No the writer's crown! Silence! You've only been working for 25 minutes. I suggest you read my book. All the necessary techniques are there. Now go away and do it again. And don't come back until it's finished. He's insane! I can't go on like this! I suppose he could have a point about the book helping. I flushed it down the toilet, didn't I? Oh, yes. Um, I'll see if I can get it back. Huh? Hmm. No sign of the book. Time, therefore, for a quick game. Ah, we're on fire! Save us, Captain Extinguisher! Never a fear, madam. 
Take that. In your face. Captain Extinguisher saves the day again. Ah. Hi, Cork. Could you, could, you, could you give me a moment, please? No. You go ahead. After all, I am just the attendant. A powerfully built attendant with the ability and motives to beat you to death with your own legs. Ah. Sorry. Am I unnerving you? Maybe a little bit, um... No, my kidneys have gone shy. Silence! Do you hear anything? Ah... No. In there. Where? Down there. Go closer. Oh, you can't catch me that easily. I'm not sticking my head down there so you can bogwash me. Bogwash? Ah, a good idea. Fresh armor. No, wait. Listen. They're talking to me again. Who? The toilet people. The toilet people are talking to you? Close your orifice and listen! Wow. What is it? It's the microbes. Ooh. They've never done that before. Have you tried flushing? It just made them angry. Bleach? They ate it. Can you hear what they're saying? <laughs> Mother's language translator has been switched off by your new master. Yeah. You know what, Cork? You weren't such a bad boss. Sentimentality is for the weak. I was good, though, wasn't I? Well, you may have had some problems with anger management. I'm never angry! Uh, but, but... You were better than Captain Grey. Anyway, I've got an idea. You wait here and I'll get Charlie. <laughs> Come and see. Come and see what? In the toilet. Moog, I can assure you there's nothing in there of yours I want to see. Um. Anyway, oh, we start to do this report. Uh, uh, Charlie, come on. It's the little people in the toilet. They're talking. Ah, Palmer, 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 Palmer. Uh, Cog. What ranks lower than toilet attendant, Palmer? I'm not sure. Why? I'm wondering what would happen if I were to accidentally hollow you out. How much further could they demote me? Don't risk your career, Mr. Korg. What's so important that you've brought me here with this homicidal lunatic? The toilet people. Oh. Can't you hear them? I can't hear anything. Place your ears in the toilet! Hey! So that is bog washing. Oh. Highly satisfying. Ugh, you bastards! I can't believe I fell for your story about toilet people. Uh, but, uh, did you hear them? Quiet, Judas, I thought you were on my side. There are no sides. Uh, relax, Palmer. Your pet had no part in this. Uh, well, I, I'm not his pet. So did you hear them or not, Charlie? <sighs> Oh, there might be something down there. I couldn't catch what they were saying, though. We need to switch Mother's translator back on. But Captain Grey won't let us near her. Leave the usurper to me. There you are. Johnson, Palmer, and this must be Cork. I shan't shake your hand. Excuse me, Captain Grey. I am just a humble toilet attendant. But I understand you have devised a formulaic system for all of life. Ah. Huh. This is true. Everything is in there. Everything? I wonder if you have considered the formula for the most efficient cleansing of toilets. I have spent some time on the matter myself. Perhaps you would be interested in my theory. Now, if we take the hourly volume of effluent to be Y, using a texture variable between weak porridge and damp brick, then what we are left with is... Quick, quiet. I think we can get to Mother without him noticing. Okay, but how are we going to get her back to normal? Oh, I think a hard reset should do it. Yes, but how are you going to do that? You're rubbish with technology. We can't just kick the CPU. System rebooting in three, two... Right, time to 
serve up that Sunday roast. Oh, what's happened? I feel rather strange. No time to explain, Mother. I need you to come and give me a hand in the toilet. Aren't you a bit old for that, dear? Okay, switching to handheld. Whoa, wait, wait, there's Cork. Where's Captain Raygun? It is okay. He's gone off to calculate the relative viscosity of vegan and carnivore excrement. Okay, put her in there. Mother, bio scan of the toilet, please. God, God. What is it? I am a bad toilet attendant. Yes, besides the crustiness, have you noticed anything else about the toilet? Well, unless I'm very much mistaken, it's our old friend, Corporal Bacillus Sapiens. Um, our old friend? Yes, a rather cantankerous little fellow, thought to have been extinct for the last ten million years. If you could lower me down just an inch, I'll isolate him in a sample chamber. Visitors to our bountiful world. I am Tim, Emperor of the Mighty and Elegant Toilet People. Um, hello, Tim. Um, I'm, I'm Charlie. Oh. We, we were kind of wondering, um... All hail the great eye of life. Have you come to bestow upon us your daily gifts of nutritious joy? Uh, Charlie, huh? what's he talking about? Please me. Pray forgiveness, your holiness. I did not at first recognise that side of you. I trust you are pleased with our progress. Who's he talking to? Cork? Ignore me. I am but a bad toilet attendant. The great moon of munificence does not recognize his unworthy children. Do you not bless our achievements? We were but pathetic snivelling germs until your bounteous sky gifts gave us the material to build our beautiful brown cities. How can we show our undying love for your holiness? I think they worship your... Yeah, I've worked it out now, thanks. What lonely gift will you accept as proof of our faith, O oh, giver of the brown life? I'm, I'm... Actually, I'm okay. A trinket of hardened slurry, mined from the royal arse farm. No, perhaps. no thanks, really. A nice hat. <laughs> no, really, really thanks. I'm not interested in jewellery or, or clothing fashioned from my own poo. Get the bleach. Charlie, you can't smite your followers. I bloody well can. Perhaps the great giver would like a tricycle. Or an iPod. A what? Don't tell me you're making electronics down there. Being bacteria, their civilization is growing at a rather faster rate than ours. Half an hour ago, they were an animal-based community. But in the meantime, 50,000 generations have passed. I think they're about to split the atom. Your machine is correct. In ten of your human minutes, we will have intergalactic travel. Whereupon, we will embark upon a holy war, enslaving all other races into arse dairies in honour of your holiness. In honour of my... No, 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 you, you really don't have to. Mother, can they really do that? Oh, absolutely. Their technology is advancing at an exponential rate. And once they're out of the confines of that toilet, they could take over the universe in a matter of hours. Johnson and Palmer, unlock this door at once. Uh, I'm, I'm a little busy. You reset the computer against my express orders. You will learn the error of your ways from the ship's brig. <laughs> I'm not a brig. Uh, yes, it's next to the laundry room. There's a laundry room? It was a bit harsh to throw you in the brig too, Korg. I do not care. I failed in the most lowly role and undermined the rule of a superior. My life is empty and meaningless. Well, if it helps, you've still got us. Oh. That didn't help. What can we do to cheer you up, eh? Mm. I mean, what do you like doing? Threatening to kill people? In that case, go ahead and threaten Charlie. Like Moog? Yeah, thank you, but... I don't deserve to threaten him. I am a failure. Oh, go on. Just growl at him a bit. Or... That's it. Just more forceful. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun. 
Now with claws. No, no, make him stop, Moog. No. Now I chase you around this tiny brick what? and make you hang from the ceiling light. Get him, get him off. <laughs> off. Now, stand on your hands and sing I'm a little teapot or I'll rip out your tonsils. But I had my tonsils removed when I was 12. So... <laughs> I'm a little teapot. Oh, I hate to spoil your fun, but I'm getting another transmission. From Tim? I think so. Says it's coming from SS Excremental. The ship. Come to save us. I don't think so, I'm afraid. It's just over your left shoulder. Ugh, a flying poo. The toilet people will not stand by whilst our god is incarcerated. We have now invented flight and have sent a craft to rescue you. Yeah, but even if we did want to climb inside anything made entirely of poo, it's a little small, isn't it? In a matter of minutes, we will have perfected miniaturization technology. But if you do not wish to wait, we can simply fashion a key for you, oh life guardian. Oh, oh man. Okay, Mook, unlock the door. No way, you do it. I'm not touching that. Well, it's your stuff. I would advise you to take the key rather than risk insulting them, Charlie. Oh, would you? Oh, um, why should I care about their feelings? Well, they have just invented nuclear weapons. Little brown ones. Take the key and get us out of here now, Palmer. <sighs> okay. Oh, look at that. Sweet corn. <laughs> Johnson and Palmer. Oh dear. How did you escape? No matter. Prepare to die, failed journalists. Ah, uh, uh, look behind you. <laughs> really, Johnson, such pantomime is beneath even you. Uh, no, really, there's a little turd flying towards your left ear. Well, I'd expect as much from you, Palmer. I have Tim on Com 1. Shall I put him through? Uh, Tim? The leader of the toilet people and captain of SS Excremental. Oh, glorious Charlie Brown father, creator of our people, we have perfected miniaturization. Finally, we can shrink you to our size so you may join us in our kingdom. Yeah, let me see. Hmm, live in a tiny city fashioned from my own poo? Well, that's tempting, but not today, thanks. This is Captain Graham Gray, commanding officer of the Indolent. You will address me, SS Excremental. Captain Graham Gray. Writer of the general theory of everything. Oh, you've heard of my work? Charlie, I knew you shouldn't have flushed that book down the bog. They've read it. We follow your scriptures as holy gospel, oh Captain. We believed it to be the words of Charlie Brownfather. But now we see him as the saggy bottom false god that he is. Oh Captain Grey. You are our true god. Hey, 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 hang on a moment. I'm not gonna have back talk from my own microbes. Uh, shh, shh, Charlie. Well, I'm glad you like the book, but really, I, I have to get on with executing these imbeciles. Such work is too menial for a deity. You will be miniaturized and taken to our city. We have a nice brown hat for you. Uh, what? I'm not living in your toilet. Get back. Ah, stop this. I don't want to live in a toilet. Ah! We have our god. We shall return to our city and trouble you no longer. <sighs> it's nice to have things back to normal round here. Mother back in baking mode. Korg back in his office. The toilet not talking. The toilet not talking. You know, I think you were right about Korg. I've seen another side to him over the last few days. We've been through a lot together. I don't think it'll ever be quite the same. Speak of the devil. He's on line one. <laughs> Hello, Korg. I've got to say, it's great to have you back. I feel like we've really bonded over the last couple of days. I know you were our toilet attendant for a while, but we can forget all that. You're more than a boss now. You're our friend. Damn your blood, human scum! I want a fresh report on the Venetian property market on my desk in two hours, or I shall scoop out your brains and dance on your empty skulls. <sighs> it's like coming home. Space Hacks 
was written by Stuart Sumner and Ian Simons and featured Dan Mersh as Charlie, Tim Key as Moo, Prunella Scales as Mother, Dan Tesla as Korg and Colin Holt as Captain Grey. Music was by Ben Walker and the producer was Victoria Lloyd. Gently does it. No room for error here. Watch and learn, Moog. You're witnessing a master in action. Yes, only there's not much actual action, is there, Charlie? It's not about action. It's cat and mouse. Mm. Yin and yang. Mm. Life and death. Are you quite sure you boys have time for marbles? Well, what else will we be doing? How about some work? Work? Mother, this is hardly the time for work. It's half past ten on Wednesday morning. Precisely. The week's just begun. Well, she's got a point, Charlie. Korg did kind of threaten to turn us into novelty handbags and sell us on eBay if we didn't submit a proper report today. So? I'm writing one. No, you're not. You're playing marbles. I win! Uh, to get us luck. Come on, rematch. Where's the rest of them? I don't know. I thought you had them. Yeah, well, I did, but you kept winning them. Well, uh, then I must have lost them, then. Lost them? You had them two minutes ago. You haven't gone anywhere. What have you done? Eaten them? Um, I don't think so. Well, just find them. We can't leave it like this. If Roland the Roller Pinkerton couldn't take them off me back in 86, I'm not going to let some fat-fingered simpleton <gasps> lose them fat now. Fat-fingered? Maybe you could focus on doing a report? Everyone needs their downtime. Downtime? When's your uptime? That's not the point. <laughs> ah, this should spur you into action. Korg on line one. Ah! Hi, hi, Korg. Korg, it's great to hear from you. Uh, so glad you called. Uh, Shut I... your head immediately. Right. I need someone expendable to track down and report on the activities of a notorious criminal. I'm sorry, expendable? Um, can't you just send a robotic drone? Drones cost money. Right. Yes. Uh, <laughs> to, to just hypothetically speaking, um, if you were me, how would you get out of doing this? I would immediately kill myself in shame. So who's this criminal then? Uh, how can we find him? What are the seven moons of Delphis gives you the impudence to ask me to do your job for you? No one knows where he is. Find him. Korg out. He seems a bit grumpy today. Oh, well, I thought that went better than usual. So, we've got to track down an anonymous criminal with no known whereabouts. Anyone got any ideas? Yes. Me too. Really? Yes. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, actually, yes, yes, so have I. Um, it's, actually, it's obvious, isn't it? <laughs> um, just, just hypothetically speaking, though, if, if you were me. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake, Charlie. I've already done a quick scan of police frequencies and learned it's Captain Pendulum thereafter. Mad Captain Pendulum? Don't be ridiculous. Who's Mad Captain Pendulum? Captain Pendulum was one of the finest military minds the Federation has ever produced. One day he's the fleet's poster boy, you know, with awards, medals, stars named after him. Right, then he discovers this alien shipwreck. And ever since, anyone he's come into contact with seems to have disappeared. Just like your marbles. I knew there was something funny going on. No, Moog, no, no. When Mad Captain Pendulum disappears, people, it's in the euphemistic sense of, of kidnaps and murders. Oh. See, whereas when you lose something, it's in the sense of, uh, I forgot to hold on to it and it rolls oh, away. Well, Pendulum can't be alive, though. Well, why not? Well, given he was last seen 300 years ago, people made a few assumptions. That's like finding blackbeards sailing up the Thames and pillaging Henley. And stealing marbles. No, Moog. A 300-year-old pirate has not stolen my marbles. Fire up the engines, Mother. We're going to beat the police to his hiding place. Oh, and uh, could you find out where that is? <laughs> Episode 6, The Fairly Good Escape. Marbles! Marbles! Where are you? Are you hiding behind that terminal? 
Backup Artificial Intelligence Modules. Welcome to the IGN Backup AI Simulation Module. Warning. The personalities of these AIs are experimental, and full testing has not been completed. Hmm. What does this button do? You have selected AI number 23, Anti-Genocide. Hello. Who shall we kill today? What about the Belgians? I uh, do like um, a lot. You have selected AI-13, Mr. Chessington. Hello there, young man. I'm Mr. Chessington, your chess-playing friend. Ah, uh, great. Uh, is it anything like Pac-Man? I'm good at Pac-Man. Um, uh, well, look. Hello. You found those marbles. Hello, Charlie. Who's this? It's Mr. Chessington. My chess-playing friend. Right, you're supposed to be looking for my marbles, not hanging around with elderly geeks. Look, geeks. Anyway, 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 you're not supposed to touch the AI module unless Mother goes out of action. It's experimental. He's probably homicidal. Excuse me, he is not homicidal. He's my chess-playing friend. Anyway, I am looking for your marbles. I'm just looking in the last place I'd think of first. <sighs> Go on, why? Once you've found something, you don't carry on looking, do you? So you always find things in the last place you look. It is just simple logic. Isn't it, Mr. Chessington? Well, it's certainly simple logic, yes. Ah, there you are, you see. More importantly, my marbles. I don't care how you do it, but just find them, all right? Get off, get off, get off my moustache! Nope, they're not in there. OK, Mother, how's my article coming along? All done. I'd like to know in what way this is your article. Well, Captain Cook didn't row his own ship round the Cape of Good Hope, did he? No. Oh. Oh, did Michelangelo single-handedly paint the... Oh, no, he did, didn't he? But anyway, the, the point is that the secret of leadership is delegation. Yeah. <clears throat> I hope I'm not interrupting, but Mother is quite correct. Forgive my intrusion, Mr. Chessington at your service, ma'am. The chess program? What are you doing on my mainframe? Uh, sorry, Mother, I, um, sort of activated him. I'll go and switch him off. You're quite right. I've been terribly rude barging in here like this, but I can't help but wonder if Mother would like to link up sometime for a megabyte or two. I wouldn't normally be so forward, but you have the circuitry of a computer half your age, and those cognitive algorithms are simply to die for. Oh, nonsense. These old things, they're just a few baking programs I knock together. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So, so anyway, about the 300-year-old psychopathic warlord we're trying to track Hi, down... Charlie, Mummy's busy. Now then, Mr. Chessington. Oh, please, do call me Egbert. So, Egbert, uh, how have you escaped my notice? Well, it can't be a malfunction in those radiant visual sensors of yours. Oh, oh Egbert, is that a male-to-female interface, or are you just pleased to see me? <laughs> oh, I think we're on our own mood. Let's leave them to it. And the weather here in deep space, cold and dark for the afternoon, <sighs> and tomorrow, and the next day. Well, it's been five hours, Moog. We haven't got through a tenth of the radio stations out there. Um, I could just stick a CD on. Yeah, you haven't really grasped this, have you, Moog? We're trying to find a police frequency so we can find out where Pendulum is, then get an exclusive. <laughs> Found Captain Pendulum ship. What? And the sun factor is five thousand. Go back one. No, go too far. Go forward one. We got him now, the pirates. Ah, got it. I want four of our biggest fighters into the Altair system now. Keep out of his radar. We've got him. Mother, to Altair without delay. My mother's rather busy just now, actually, Charles. <laughs> She's the one always telling us to work. Yes, but why can't you just go to your room and do some work like good boys? Because we're chasing down a warship with a demented captain, Mother. As you'd know, if you hadn't been off smooching with your boyfriend. Smooching? I'm sure I have no idea what you mean. Look, Mother, I I've nothing against you having... liaisons, but there's a time and a place, right? Well, I don't bring my girlfriends along when we're in the middle of making a major scoop, do I? You've never had a girlfriend. Or a major scoop. I was speaking hypothetically. <laughs> We're here. This is the Altair system. Any sign of Pendulum? No, but there are a couple of large police fighters. Well, stay cloaked. We have to get a message to Pendulum without the police noticing. 
See, this is where the skill comes in, Moog. You can't just expect him to fall into our laps. We've got to be, you know, subtle. Tease him out with our wits, our, our guile. IGN Craft, this is Captain Pendulum. State your intentions or prepare to die. Wait, 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 sorry, sorry. We, we just wanted to let you know that there are two police battle cruisers hiding behind that moon, and we thought you might like the opportunity to sneak off before they catch you. Police? What? Is this some kind of bluff? No, no, no. Lieutenant, send a rocket drone immediately. Um... Beware! If you are lying, I shall evaporate you. Right, okay, um... Okay. Right, fine. Well, we have a few moments to wait while, uh... While my lieutenant gets back to me and we find out if I'm going to blow you up. Uh-huh. Um... Hate this bit. <laughs> this is awkward. Yeah. <laughs> oh... What to say... He, um, having a nice day? It's been alright. Not bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Are you? So, so. Got a touch of eczema, I think, mm. yeah. But, uh, besides that, I am brilliant. Mm. Aha, here's my lieutenant. Yes. Apparently there are indeed police cruisers behind the moon. <sighs> oh. Captain Pendulum allows you to live. Thank you very much, Captain Pendulum. Thank you. That's okay, but now I must leave. Uh, um, Captain Pendulum, before you go, um, I don't suppose I could get a very quick interview for IGN News. <laughs> 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 but my associate means if you're if you're not too busy, if you're not too busy, um, and don't mind, if you don't mind doing yeah, it, yeah, not to worry if, if you do mind. I mean, we'll just go, won't we? It's, we'll, uh, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. <laughs> we'll, we'll go. Don't kill us. <laughs> um, Lieutenant, send them our coordinates so they can teleport over. We got a teleporter. Amazing, absolutely amazing. So perhaps in closing, Captain Pendulum, uh, if you could summarise for the viewers, what is the secret behind your longevity and youthful looks? Well, I'm a vampire. What? <laughs> I'm only joking. Oh. <laughs> 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 Making jokes. <laughs> no, no, I'm afraid it's nothing more than a strict diet and daily exercise. Nothing to it. Well, I, I certainly hope I look that good in 300 years. <laughs> Well, I think that should be enough for the fans. Did you get all that move? Uh, yep, all in the can. Can you teleport us back now, please? What? Oh, no, no. No, no, no. Uh, you may transfer your story, but nobody may leave Captain Pendulum. Please don't kill us. <laughs> Calm down. You've nothing to fear from me. Ensign Rogers, have I ever killed anyone? Uh, well, you did shoot the gunnery officer. Did it? Uh, yes, yesterday, sir. Did I? Dear me. I am getting forgetful. And quite violent, it seems. Now, what was it that you were here for? Are you the replacement gunnery officer, or are you the reporters that I was planning to kill? Uh, I, yes, we're the replacement crew. Uh, definitely crew. Um, I'll be gunnery officer. I'll make sure to keep a lookout for those journalists. What journalists? <laughs> oh, dear. Now, do you need any training? Maybe a bit. Um, what does a gunnery officer do again? Just stand over there and don't touch anything. Well, that's it. That's my training, is it? That's the same induction you gave me, Charlie. Now, Ensign Rogers, what shall we do with the simple one? I think Rogers has died, Captain. Oh, dear. Did I shoot him, too? No, no, he must be 90 if he was a day. Oh. He had major organ failure. Brilliant. It's the way he would have wanted to go. That's the third one this week. <sighs> right, what are they doing? Oh, yes, Palmer, come with me. I have some business that requires... How shall I put this? A fresh perspective. So, Officer Palmer, glass of sherry? Oh. <laughs> now, I want to get to know the real you. What makes Palmer tick? Well, I... I Tell I, me I, about your family. Oh, they were... Where do you see yourself in five years? Can I finish a sentence? No need. Just waiting for the drugs to take effect. Huh? You should be ready now. What's happening to me? Uh, here we go. Um, hello? <laughs> I'm Moog. <sighs> I'm new here. We all are, boy. I've only been here a month, and I'm considered a bit of an old-timer. I suppose you are a bit old. <laughs> well, you all are. Hey? Did he say we look old? Oh, did you? Jesus. Yeah, all right, this job takes its toll on you. I'm only 25, you know. Well, you mean you feel 25? No, I feel about 90. I really am 25. Hey? You know, Pendulum, he didn't allow mirrors. I saw myself in a spoon this morning, though. I did seem to have aged a tad. These other boys look terrible, don't they? <laughs> you don't look 25. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Us young and should stick together. Just being around that lot makes me feel old. Yeah. How old do you think they are? Peterson, 
Peterson, mm? how old are you? How old am I? Twenty-three, I think. Oh, senile old duffer. Do you know what Pendulum's doing with Charlie? It's just I'm a bit worried. He's been gone all day. Uh, he'll be the captain's favourite for the day. He always chooses one, takes him off for a few hours, FaceTime. We all had it when we started. He soon gets tired, moves on to someone else. Well, why do you put up with it? Hey. I mean, there's enough of you. Mutiny! Mutiny! Come on, who's with me? Oh, dear. <laughs> Charlie, where have you been? It's been two days, and all these guys want to do is play dominoes and snooze all the time. Yeah, slacking on the job, eh? I'll soon knock that out of them. I don't think there's much left to be knocked out, if I'm honest. They're all senile. They think they're our age. You look knackered. I do not look knackered. I look war-weary, with the burden of responsibility. Your hair's grey. You're paunchy. Well, uh, you're paunchier. I am not. I'm just filling out a bit. It's all muscle. So boring out here, with all these old codgers. Listen, can I come with you and Pendulum? Uh, one day, if you follow my example, you may rise to a junior ranking officer. Then you may join us. I don't know what's got into you. It's been two days and suddenly you're Admiral Nelson. I've finally found my calling. You've always said I'm a natural leader and... Well, no, well, you've always said you're a natural leader. Well, I was right. I'm perfectly suited to the rigour that... Discipline, uh, structure of military life. Well, no, you're not. You just like the uniform. Yeah, I do look rather good in it, though, don't I? We have to get out of here, Charlie. Are you suggesting desertion, mister? No, no I am not. You two! Just... Is it time for my cocoa? Yes! Sling this impudent rat in the brig! We'll see if that teaches him some respect for his elders ah, and betters. Charlie! Yeah, go on. Charlie! Go on! Right, make that 47 hours and 50 minutes. Yeah, I'm going to let you out of the brig early. We've got to get out of here, Charlie. There's something weird going on. If you can get me another beard, maybe we can sneak out disguised as a couple of those old duffers. What, another beard? What? Yes, like yours. What? I've got a beard! Where did that come from? Do you not remember putting it on? And dyeing your hair white? What? Give me a mirror. There aren't any. Unless... Have you got a spoon? You look like a fat Father Christmas. <laughs> uh-huh. Is Pendulum feeding you up? What? Perhaps he's planning to eat you. He did say he was a vampire. Don't be ridiculous. No, no, we just chat about my glowing future as an officer and... Well, then it's a bit hazy. Gunnery officer on the bridge! At ease, men! Ooh. Another IGN transmission coming through. Shall I cut it off? No, 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 it's probably Korg calling to congratulate us on a job well done. Let it through. This is IGN ship SS Indolent. Two of our crew are missing. Oh, mother! There you are, boys. I've been trying to get a signal through for days. There are two police ships approaching from aft. Where's the captain? Sorry about that. Looks like I might have exposed to a hiding place. Well, Lieutenant Prebbit, switch the engine to come off and find the captain while I take evasive action. Oh. What's going on in here? Police, prepare ballistics. Pendulum doesn't run and hide. Two more police cruisers, starboard and four. Raise shields and open comms with the enemy. This is Police Captain Pachenko. My father chased you, my grandfather chased you, my great-grandfather cooked sausages in a space station cafe. That's, that's less relevant. Disengage your weapons and lower your shields. Never! You are outnumbered and outgunned. Give it up. Lieutenant Palmer, open fire. Right. What, me? Open fire! Launch the dark matter missiles. Missiles? I'm, I'm more into the epaulets and the, the war poetry. Are you disobeying an order, officer? No, 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 not at all, not at all. Well, maybe a bit. Then Pendulum must kill you. Run for it, move! Where? There's nowhere to run, we're locked in! Shields at 80%, Captain! Desertion now, is it, Palmer? Sling these cowardly scum in the brig! I'll execute them later! Ah, wait, wait, wait! All of you, wait! Now look, you don't have to do anything he says. Cast off this cruel overseer and enter the dawn of a new era! The era of Palmer! What'd he say? Something about ears of a farmer. Who's eating a llama? Shield lowering, Captain. What? They can't just lower themselves. The computer isn't responding. It's been locked out. It's offering me a game of chess, Captain. Hull breach imminent. Incoming transmission. One more missile and it's all over. Pendulum doesn't surrender. When they board, you men hold them off with handguns. But, Captain, they'll kill us. Yes, but the important thing is they won't kill me. 
And, you know, you've had a good innings. I'm only 25. Well, live fast, die young, is what they say. Can't say I agree, but then I am 300 years old. Now, you two deserter scum. Ah, You're but, coming with me. No, no, I'm trying to help. There you are, boys. My personal escape pod. Shouldn't an escape pod sort of be on the outside of the ship? Rather than in the middle of the room and made of weird alien glass. Oh, enough of your yapping! Get in there! Oh, come on! This definitely isn't right, Charlie. Why have you always got to complain? All right, it's not comfortable with just the one chair, but I'll let you sit down in a couple of hours. Why are there only two of us in here? Pendulum is in the other pod operating the controls, oh. which is perfectly normal because there's no controls in here, just blank walls and a... Sort of ray gun type thing pointing down at us. Actually, oh, no. I'm getting a bit of deja vu here. That's right, Palmer. Welcome to my time siphon. In a couple of minutes, all your youth will be squeezed out of what? you and coursing into me. <gasps> <laughs> I, I quite fancy being a toddler again. <laughs> when the police get here, they won't think of arresting a three-year-old boy. That would be madness. <laughs> Yes! I've already stolen about 30 years off you, Palmer. You're not likely to survive this, I'm afraid. Setting Siphoner to the mouth! No! Luke, these are the remaining few seconds of our lives, and you're playing Pac-Man? Um, oh, mind the ghost, mind the ghost, mind the ghost! <clears throat> In a spot of bother, are we, boys? Mr. Uh -huh. Tussington, how did you get here? I beamed in when Mother called, but I expect you worked that out when I lowered the shield. Oh. Can you stop this machine? We're going to die! Now, I'd like you two to promise to be nicer to Mother in future. You can't tell me what to do. You're not my real dad. Anyway, this isn't really the best time for us to have a heart-to-heart. -heart. I, I can feel the youth sapping out of my bones. Oh, glorious youth! Like the breath of a dog. Charlie, have a look over at Pendulum. Ah, yeah. uh, he's going all ancient. What's happening? My skin's all pinched. My hair's falling out and I smell of urine. Look, you're shrinking. You look about 15. Uh, that's right, I've reversed the machine. What about you? You look about 10. Siphoning machine off. I don't like the nasty machine, Mr. Chesty Bum. Now then, boys, you need to sit still so that I can turn you back into what passes for adults. I don't want it. I want to play conkers. <laughs> ah. That's better. Now, we don't have any time to waste. You two need to get off this ship before it blows up. Get Pendulum. He might be able to show us the way to the real escape pod. Wakey, wakey! Where's the real escape pod? Where's the real escape pod, Pendulum? You can't slap an old man. It's not right, Charlie. A minute ago, he was trying to kill us both. Well... That was the reactor. Once the core is exposed... The escape pod! Oh, we've got an entire ship to search! We'll never find it in time! We don't have to search the entire ship. We only need to look in one place. Remember? Stay away from my moustache! But that's the last place I'd ever look! You come on up the same place for everything. You need to come up with somewhere new. No, I, I can't help it. That's the last place I'd look for everything. That, that, that doesn't even make sense! I mean, what if you were looking for my upper lip? Well, uh, then I'd look in the fridge in the corner. Better than nothing. Let's try it. It worked! It's a false fridge! Look, it leads into the escape pod! Quick, get in! <laughs> right. Now, launch! Launch! I'm launching! Head for mother! They're in the distance! Ah, home sweet home. There you are, boys. Where's Iggy? Iggy? Hey, oh, ah. Hey. Uh, he was here a minute ago. On Pendulum's ship. Just before it, um... Oh. Uh, oh, I'm really sorry, Mother. He, 
He must have known he'd be sacrificing himself to save us. Sorry, Mother. I'm here! Will someone help me out of here? But that's coming from your pack, man. Mr. Chessington, what? you're what? alive! Not the ghost! Go left! Go right! Go, no, 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 go left! Left, left, no. um, oh, I mean, I mean, I mean, go right. No! Oh, sorry, Mother. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> Pendulum's coming round. Prepare to be atomized. I don't think so, old man. I'm not finished yet. Oh, ah, he's got a gun hidden in his hat. I spent 300 years slowly lowering my age. It took you 20 minutes to turn me into a decrepit wreck. You must pay uh -oh. with your lives. <laughs> hey, there are my marbles. He trod on them. Is he dead? Well, his head's gone back to front. It's Korg! <laughs> the police inform me you were seen aiding the escape of a wanted criminal and will be sentenced to death. <laughs> Show me our prisoner. Moog, drag him up to the screen and try to make him stand. Uh, Korg, here is Captain Pendulum. Say hello, Captain Pendulum. Uh, Say hello. Captain Pendulum? Um, hello, Mr. Karg. I'm Captain Pendulum! He's dead, isn't he? You actually managed to locate a man who had evaded centuries of police searches and then accidentally killed him. Yeah. Ah, oh, the police. Well, at least they will deal with your bodies in the way you deserve. Korg out. <laughs> Well, it was nice of the police to let us off. And it's a jolly nice medal he gave you, Moog. Yes. Go nicely with your brown tank top. I don't see why I couldn't have a medal. You heard the police, dear. Moog single-handedly neutralised the Federation's most wanted terrorist. <laughs> neutralised? Yes. He just left my marbles on the floor. You were just jealous because you weren't interviewed on primetime telly. What were you doing? You're not supposed to be interviewed. You're supposed to be the journalist. Cork will go mad. Well, I got you a good part in the TV dramatisation. It's already started. Ah, look, that's me. No, Captain Pendulum. Moog Johnson will stand for this no longer. <laughs> Unhand the girl or feel the fist of justice. <laughs> They've made you into a yank. Oh, Moog, you're so brave. I think I'm in love you. Where am I? Silence, woman. I'm scared, Moog. <laughs> Maybe we should give up and join the enemy. Who the hell's that meant to be? They've made me a coward and a fat one. Uh, at least they haven't made you an American. Oh, Moog, you're so brave. I think I may love you. Mm -hmm. oh, that's it, give me that remote. Come on, give it to me. No, give it to me now. Come on, give me the remote. Come on, this is embarrassing. It's ridiculous. Come on, give me the remote. Give me it. Hey, get off me. Give it here. Space Hacks was written by Stuart Sumner and Ian Simons and featured Dan Mersch as Charlie, Tim Key as Moog, Prunella Scales as Mother, Dan Tetzel as Korg, Jeffrey McGiven as Mr. Chessington, Anna Bengo as Auntie Genocide, and Chris O'Dowd as Captain Pendulum. Music was by Ben Walker and Adam Gutteridge, and the producer was Victoria Lloyd. Always leave some space for Space Ham. A necklace? Where would she put it? Hmm. Yeah, I guess not. Uh, gloves! Moog, so far you've suggested a hat, mm -hmm. socks, underwear, a necklace and now gloves. She's a computer, she can't wear stuff. I'm sorry, Charlie. I'm rubbish at this. Come on, we need to think of a present for the onboard computer that has everything. Yes. What about a hat? Does she have any hobbies? Oh, I've got it. Ah, look at that. Perfect. A vacuum cleaner? She hasn't even got hands. How's she going to push it around? Not just any vacuum cleaner. Look, it's voice activated. Oh, cool. Oh, she'll love it. Look. Most powerful suction cleaner in the universe. Banned in seven galaxies. Comes in pink. Only trouble is, it's her birthday today. Yep. Oh, delivery options. Snail mail, next day, immediate dispatch on hyperspace-capable invisible sea lions. Did you know invisible sea lions? They make great couriers. Yeah, it's all in the tail. And you're sure it isn't a bit of a... 
sexist present. You think she'd prefer it in blue? Episode 7, Empire in the Sun. Boys, you know I hate it when you put me on deaf mode. What do you want to? It had better not involve mucky pictures. Deaf mode off. Of course not, Mother. Anyway, I'll have a tea and a slice of Battenberg, please. And I'll have a glass of squash and a cupcake. And my room needs tidying. Not even a thank you. Just take everything for granted. I don't know why I bother. Deaf mode on. I can't wait to see the look on her screen when she sees her present. Yes, she's going to be so excited. <laughs> Hi, Cork, how's it hanging? Your present today will soon be matched by the rapidity of your device. Yeah, 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 yeah. But this time we're not in trouble, are we? We sent you an article yesterday. Yeah, you can't be angry. Actually, can we have a rise? Oh, of course. I can't be angry. How silly of me. I should be grateful for your wonderful article about the Earth being a giant space egg. Now, let's say 10% on our basic and uh, maybe... And the uh... fact that every other reporter in the galaxy submits reports daily doesn't mean I should expect something new from you today. Well, perhaps they need to learn that quality means more than quantity. Ignorant slime! You can't even tell when I'm being sarcastic. You will film a report of my choosing. Sorry, film a report of you choosing what? Ah, uh, no, I think he means he's going to invent something nasty for us to report on. Ugh. You will film yourselves flying into the sun. What? But we'll fry before we even get close. Oh, do you think I would risk your lives on a report? Of course I would. But the ship is too valuable. It has been fitted with extreme heat shields. Uh, and they can definitely protect us from that heat. They're there to protect the ship. If you also survive, that's... An unfortunate side effect. Right. Can we still have a rise? Call out. Don't worry, Moog. I know what to do. You've always got a plan, Charlie. Def mode off. Mother, can you get us out of this, please? Yes, that's usually your plan. What's that? Sorry, I'm a little distracted. There appears to be an invisible giant sea lion outside waiting for you to sign for a package. Ah, uh, yes, that'll be, um... Uh, just, just some stuff I ordered off the internet. Stuff off the internet? Oh, I see. More mucky pictures. It's not mucky pictures. Open airlock. Hello? Ah, ah there you are. <laughs> sign, sign here? Oh, okay. Oh, you sea lions certainly do deliver quickly, don't you? It's all in the tail, I bet. Oh, oh, bye. They don't say much, do they, sea lions? Way! What's going on? Mother! Mother, I didn't give orders for takeoff! Oh, you give orders now, do you? You used to ask. Oh, I didn't ask you to take off. Cork's taken remote control of the ship. Well, take control back, he's going to kill us. I'm waiting for the magic word. Please don't let Cork kill us. You happy now? I can't. He's completely overridden my systems. What? So you made me say please for nothing? Um, maybe we could argue after we find a way out. Mother. Yeah, yeah. I know what's going on. You're just upset because you think we've forgotten your birthday. Not even a card from my own boys. Yeah, but you didn't even tell us. We only know it's today because Moog found your best before label while looking for conkers in the airing cupboard. Well, of course I hid it. Who likes to be reminded they're out of date? Um, we've got five minutes. I don't want to melt. I've got an idea. To the escape capsule! Sorry, it's out of action, Charlie. Oh, Moog! Did you install Space Invaders on it again? Don't blame Moog, Charlie. It's the new heat shields they're blocking it in. You might as well get the cameras rolling. If we do make it out alive, I'd hate to have to go back in because you forgot to record it. Um, should these shields be melting already? Solar impact in T-minus 50. Okay, make this a good one, Charlie. Right. This could be it. Okay. Hello, and welcome to IGN Technology Update. Today we're in sunny Seoul, road testing heat shields. Now you're probably thinking, heat shields? 
Why would I want some of those unless I'm going to do something stupid like, oh, I don't know, fly into a sun? Well, that, my friends, is exactly the kind of stupid, irresponsible, quite probably suicidal thing that we do on IGN Technology Update. It's a galactic news. Now, strap yourselves in for some hardcore product reviewing, because it's about to get hot in here. It's a galactic news. Right, that sound is what any sensible pilot will recognise as the hull asking you to slam on the brakes and get the hell out of there. But this isn't the kind of show where we exercise common sense. No, we're testing shield automatic ultra-cool Mark IIs on the kind of battered, run-around stealth ship your granny probably uses for the shopping. Mark Ones, you may recall, actually melted at room temperature. So, well, let's hope those boffins at shield automatic have learned their lesson. Because we're going in! Main hull and maximum stress. Atmospheric breach imminent. Well, that confirms what we feared all along. Those shield matic boffins should hang up their white coats, don their dunces' caps, and go back to school because we're completely and utterly toast. Toast, yeah! Toast that was already burnt when you set fire to your toaster, poured lighter fuel on your house, and dropped the lot into a volcano in a sea of petrol! It's a news. Ship approaching Sun's core. Well, that's great! They're just telling me to say, don't try this at home! It certainly is strange. Uh, cut. Mother, you can't say that on TV. Yes, well, we lost the broadcast ages ago when the aerial melted. But on the bright side, we're not dead. Is this... heaven? No. We appear to be in the sun's core. But it's so... nice. Yeah. I, I certainly wasn't expecting trees. Or a nice little stream. So the... the sun's hollow, then? And inhabited, too. There's a city ahead. I'll take us in. Someone on line one. I think it's Cork, but we've only got one bar of reception. Sorry, Cork! You, you, you're breaking up! <laughs> this is great! We found the one place in the galaxy where Cork can't call us! And he's lost remote control of the ship, too. Mother, is there any chance that this city is populated by a female race? Uh, with maybe strict rules about nakedness? You can find out yourself, dear. I've set us down in the main square. There's quite a crowd outside. <sighs> this is my moment. At last, aliens! Um, Charlie, we work with aliens for aliens, making news stories broadcast to aliens. Yeah, yeah, but these are new aliens. <laughs> I'm gonna make first contact. Um, Charlie, do you think this is a good idea? This is what it's all about, Moog. Meeting new civilizations, extending the hand of friendship. Yes, but everyone we've ever met has wanted to kill us. The other times were different. But they live inside the sun. It's weird, Charlie. Just let me do the talking. We come in peace! Me, Charlie! This my servant, Moog! Uh, servant? They're a simple society. They respond to hierarchy. Take me to your naked women! Charlie. Wait, William's approaching. He must be their leader. Immediate death upon you! Uh, see? I told you, Charlie. Allow me to consume your kidneys. Sorry. Adjusting universal translator. Please hold. Ah, there you see. It's a translation problem. There'll be naked girls yet. You just watch. Allow me to consume your liver. Ah, that's better. We are the Bengineers, and we salute your demise. Oh, engineers? Oh, excellent. Right. No, no, no. Shit. Bengineers. Bengineers? Yes. I am Ben. Ben. Of the Bengineers. Right. Maybe something's getting lost in translation. You find our name in some way amusing. Well... Because those who find our name objectionable are sliced up into little pieces. Chop, chop. You can't do that. We're British. The Bengineers know this. We monitor your planet. Are you spies? No. Reporters. Uh, uh, sort of. Spies are also sliced into little pieces. Chop, chop. We maintain your sun. The boy, see, Moog. I expect without you guys here, the sun would just, what, burn itself out in a few weeks, would it? Uh, I don't know about that. Do you doubt us? Doubters are sliced into little pieces. Yes, yes. Is there someone else we could talk to? You must come to the Chamber of Visitors. <laughs> Welcome to the Chamber of Visitors. You must wait while the Council convenes. Nice decor. Have you just had that done? 
It's all still covered in plastic wrapping. You were the first to visit. Oh, well, perhaps I could just uh, symbolically remove the wrapping as the first visitor from outer space. You will not touch the wrapping. There may be slicing and blood. The council is convened. But there's only you. And you've put a funny hat on. You find Ben, the councillor of the Benjineers hat, in some way silly? No, 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 no. Ben, the councillor of the Benjineers hat, is extremely conventional. Um, I, I particularly like the water feature and the pointy, um... Phallus. The council must decide what is to be done. Why, well, is there anything we could do to help the council? A, a, a gift, perhaps. Um, what have we got, Moog? I've got 49 pence. Oh, oh and a prawn. No, 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 back at the ship. Uh, there must be something, Ben, councillor of the Engineers, that you could use from an IGN stealth ship. Uh, a nice TV camera. You are bribing. No, 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 we're just trying to be helpful. If you are bribing, we must go to the Chamber of Bribes for chopping up nice. Or you are invaders? Uh, no. So we don't need to go to the Chamber of Invaders either? No, oh, no, 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 no! Invaders are taken back to their ships to show us their invasion plans, and then taken to the Chamber of Invaders. We, we, we're just reporters. If you'd like, we could interview you, make you famous! Yes. It is true that Ben is an undiscovered talent who just needs his mo- Ben will be a movie rock star playboy! The Ben of the Benjineers! Would you arrange for our ship to be fixed and let us go in exchange for becoming famous? Wait! You can guarantee I get to wear tight shorts and drink 7-Up through curly straws? Okay, you've got a deal. Very well. I prepare my hair and cool walk. The Benjineers will repair your ship. Then I become new movie rock star playboy, Benny Cool! You may go... Wherever we like? Everywhere, besides the Forbidden Zone, yes. What's in the Forbidden Zone? Are you spies? Spies will be taken no, to the we're not. We're not spies. We, we'll be going now. Uh, thanks, Benny Cool. <laughs> Let us know when you're ready to become a uh, movie rock star playboy. Move, never ask what's in the Forbidden Zone. It's the first rule of intergalactic diplomacy. Greetings. Hello. Oh. Can you direct me to the Forbidden Zone, please? <laughs> What are you doing? It's probably running straight to Ben. I can't help it. Aren't you curious? Don't you want to know what's in there? It, it could be anything. An invasion fleet about to launch for Earth. Yeah, all their sewage works. Or the answer to all the ultimate questions. Or a tax office. But maybe it's where they keep their naked women. Immediate death be upon you. Uh, hello, could you direct me to the Forbidden Zone? Ah! No, it's, it's wrong, it's wrong. We should leave well alone. I'm a diplomat now. It's time to act responsibly. Right. What do diplomats actually do? Um, live in large houses neat for Air Rocher. Hmm, that sounds good. What if Mother can make them? Hello, Mother. Your finest nutty chocolates, please. <laughs> and a map of the city. What do we need a map for? To get to the Forbidden Zone. Right, if you were going to build a whole zone that was totally forbidden, would you put it on the map? Ah, exactly. So we look for any other zone that's mysteriously empty and unmarked. That's it. I've had enough of the pair of you. Constantly demanding things, never once saying thank you, and you can't even get me a simple card. Mother, I try to understand. We're diplomats now. Diplomats, schmiplomats, get out, go on. And don't come back until you've learned some manners. Wait a moment. What? There's chocolates. Can't have you going out without a proper meal. Mmm, yum. And I know I'm too soft on you, but here's your map. Oh. Now, out! Yes. Right. Hmm. Here we are. Nothing zone. No looking. Sounds a bit suspicious to me. Ah, just around the next corner. This is easy. You are under arrest. Who the hell are you? We are the heavily armed and highly trained city militia. We are prone to fits of mindless destructive violence. Show them, boys. Hey! hey you're up. <gasps> and our favourite colour is blue. Show them, boys. Ta da! Ah, nice pashminas. <laughs> Look, there's obviously been a mistake. Uh, do you know who I am? I, I have diplomatic immunity. Diplomat schmiplomat. But I flew here in the belly of the metal beast! I am your god! Men, take them to the Chamber of Spies. Oh, blimey.
So, you are spies after all, and you told me that you were not spies. Perhaps you should be taken to the Chamber of Liars. Look, I can explain. Silence! You shall be allowed to speak once the council has convened. Now, where's my hat? Ah, there it is. Now you may speak. Look, we're just journalists. Ah, that is impossible. Why? We don't have a chamber for journalists. You are spies and shall be sentenced to chop chop. You see, Charlie? What did I tell you? But what about Benny Cool, the superstar rock movie playboy? Ben has gone off the idea. Ben has seen Earth Television with your I'm a superstar, stop this nonsense, and blankety blank. It is too rich a life for humble Ben. I'll stick to what I do well. Uh, yeah, which is? Ben excels at choppity slicey chop death. Ben, 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 before we get to that, I do have one tiny point. What's that? Run! Charlie, where are we going? Um, here, look, the Chamber of Escapes. I think we lost them, Charlie. I knew it. I knew they'd turn on us, just as I predicted. Well, just as I predicted. Nah, he fall into the classic trap there. What, of being right? No, it's, it's quite normal for hangers-on to seek to imitate great people or, or even claim their deeds as their own. I mean, I should be angry, but really, I'm flattered. Charlie? No, nope, just accept it, Moog. I'm right and you're... Charlie? Look, there at the end of the tunnel. What is he? Quick, help me with this gate. Some kind of spaceport. There are doors in the sun. Look, that's space. I bet this is the Forbidden Zone. Those ships are enormous. So they're flying those zeppelins up the edge of the interior and emptying the gas to refuel the sun. It's just like Ben said. Oh, well, we should get out of here before... I'm we... not sure that's what they're doing. Uh, you fall into another trap. Look, Charlie, think about it. You really think the Bengineers keep our sun going? Well, someone's got to. It makes perfect sense. I mean, how can a big ball of flaming gas last for even a week without someone refueling it? Let alone billions of years. So if we somehow stopped the Bengineers, then it would burn out in a week? Yeah, well, well, maybe a fortnight. This is when you become an astrophysicist anyway. Those Zeppelins are bigger on the way out than the way in. They're stealing the gas, Charlie. Yes, that's what I've been saying all along. So we've got to stop them. Have we? No. We've got to get into one of those Zeppelins. Look, if we scooch over this fence, uh -huh. dodge the security guards, uh -huh. somersault those crates. Uh -huh. Right, we're in. Nice plan, Moog. Lucky those guards were there to break your fall off those crates. I didn't fall. It was martial arts. <laughs> so why'd you scream as you fell? That was my war cry. So your war cry is, oh no! Look, it worked! Anyway, it was pretty lucky finding two guards with our builds and quick release uniforms. Yes. Although pretty unlucky that we got changed into the wrong ones. You could fit two of me in these trousers. Can we swap? Are you calling me fat? Well, those drain pipes don't really work on you. Yes, they do. I look manly. They don't even cover your arse. They're hipsters. It's the way you're supposed to wear them. Charlie, they're pushing your arse cheeks up to your shoulders. It's not right. Well, you wanted the uniform with a holster and the ray gun. Nobody forced you. Do you want the gun? I don't need it. Words are my weapons. Yeah. Not really as good as guns, though, are they? I mean, saying bang is never going to be as good as lasering someone in the face. Mook, have I taught you nothing? In the right hands, pathos is an attack squadron. Simile, a bayonet, and metaphor, a truncheon more fearsome than any mere ray gun. Hmm. Shall we have a duel and test that out? No, I wouldn't want to hurt you. Try me. Don't tempt me. Go on. You're bluffing. Your best move is to fall over and hope your weight does the work for you. Okay, you've asked for it. Poetry, attack. Old glistening fate twinkling softly in the darkness. How your terror romps playfully through the night. <sighs> yeah, you're right. That is quite painful. First blood to me. Oh, my hair! You idiot! That was nearly my face! Second blood to me. Right. So we get to the bridge, hijack the ship, and bust this story wide open. Excellent. I'll be right behind you. Well, a few steps behind you. Well, actually, I'll stay here. Actually, I'll hide in this cupboard. Uh, uh, so, so I'll just do all the dangerous stuff on my own, then? Well, you've got the gun. Yes, but you've got pathos and everything. Yeah, Moog, I'm a man of poetry. I'm artistic. You can't go around risking the likes of me in Mortal Kombat. I'm sorry, you're, you're just more expendable. Now, out of the way, my cupboard awaits. Charlie! 
you idiot? Can't you read? This cupboard door is alarmed. Well, I thought it was a joke. It's OK. Remember, we're dressed as them. They won't know who we are. What? Who set off this alarm? Can't you read? I am not a reporter from Earth. What? It's true, we're not. Look, we've got uniforms and everything. Ugh, I can see hairy bum flesh. That's not regulation. Oh, uh, here we go. What chamber do I have to go to for that, then? None. Just stop mucking about with the cupboards. Hey, see, Moo? We got away with it. Uh, told you words are mightier. And dressing up is mightiest of all. Ah! Hang on, someone else is coming. Mm. Halt! Trespassers! Better the Benjineers will not allow this. Ben! No, 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 it's not us. Look, look at our uniforms. Guards! Quick, Mook, use the laser. Use your words. Use the laser. I can't. You have trespassed in the Forbidden Zone. Trespassers are taken to the Chamber of Trespassing. This isn't the time for moral soul searching, Mook. Shooting! I can't. You can. I can't. If I take my hands out of my pockets, my trousers will fall down. We are the heavily armed and highly trained city militia. We are prone to... Oh, it's you again. Take them to the Chamber of Trespassing. Wait, um, we're not trespassers. We're actually invaders. No, what are you Shh. doing? I know what I'm doing, Charlie. Very well. Take them to their ship. We will search for the invasion plans. <laughs> Has the computer been disengaged from control of the ship? Yes, O oh Ben of the Benjineers. I might have known. I let you out for five minutes and within a few hours you're marched back at gunpoint. What did they do? Stealing, was it? I told them about stealing. Much more serious than stealing, computer. Arson, then. Criminal damage. Not washing. If you wish to levy additional charges against the accused, you may do so in the Chamber of Accusations. They have been caught in the Forbidden Zone and are guilty of high treason. They are to be executed, chop chop. But first, we must find the invasion plans. What invasion plans? Yeah, what invasion plans, Moog? Um, I'm sure they're around here somewhere. If you just take these handcuffs off. Yeah, yes, yes, and, and untie our legs. And then let us go. Hmm? Negative. We will search for the plans ourselves. You are not to be trusted. Watch them carefully, Captain. The rest of you men, search the ship. Yes, yes sir. <laughs> so, Captain of the City Militia, eh? Your mum must be very proud. Invaders are not permitted to speak. Mother, help us! Silence! Oh, don't worry, officer. Why should I help them? Ungrateful pair of works I lay about. Bit of execution will do them good. So, your plan, Moog, was to declare ourselves invaders and be executed on our own ship. Charlie, have some faith. One more word and I'll fry you like... Ooh, hold on. Hello? Oh, look, I told you, don't call me when I'm on duty. No, I'm just with some prisoners there. Yeah, yeah, they're going to be chopped up. Yeah. Charlie! Yeah. He's using his mobile phone. Oh, that's fascinating, Moog. We're about to get dismembered, and you want to discuss telecoms? Well, he's obviously got a stronger signal than us. Oh, whoop de doo Shall I ask him what tariff he's on? Okay. Now shut it. I'm working on some escapist poetry. She's your mother. I've got to go. We cannot find your plans. You have ten seconds to reveal their location before we begin the chopping. Okay, you've got us. They're in that box in the corner. That's Mother's birthday present. What are you doing? Oh, you crack under the strain of my questioning. Guards, open that box. Oh, that's oh, nice. Oh, oh. Voice activation on. Engage mega suction mode. Congratulations on purchasing a mega suckomatic Mark IV. By activating mega suction, you hereby forego any legal recourse for injury, death, or maiming. <laughs> Better the engineers will not be defeated. Prepare for choppy, choppy death. Get him off me! Hoover, protect your master! Charlie, grab that phone before it's sucked up. Who cares about the phone? I'm trying to stop being dismembered. Yeah, um, Hoover, target Ben of the Benjineers. Oh, what have you done? You will be taken to the chamber of... <laughs> OK, I've got your stupid phone. Now, who did you want to text? Just plug it into Mother's communicator. Why? Well, just do it. I don't take orders from you. Charlie! OK. 
But not because you told me to. Done it. Someone online won. At last, communication restored. How dare you allow yourselves to go beyond contact range? Call receiving remote control. I'm piloting you back to give you some proper punishment. Okay. The Bengineers have all been sucked up. Hoover off. I said, Hoover off. Negative. There is still mess to tidy. Ah, it's got my legs! Mother, help! Such ungrateful boys. No more than you deserve. Hoover off! Mega suction mode off! S- stop! Please! Help! No! Oh, oh, I'm about to be killed by a household appliance! It wasn't supposed to end this way! Hold on, Charlie! I can't! It's too strong! Goodbye, Mook! Over, off immediately, or rip your dust bag out and use it as a bicycle seat. Yes, sorry. All it takes is a little authority. <gasps> wow! Korg, you saved my life! Of course. I can't kill you myself if you're already dead. Now return immediately and your report had better be good. Or I'll flail you with your own spines. Korg out. Well, only one thing left to do now. Yes, I uh, suppose so. <laughs> Mother? What is it? Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear mother. You're seriously giving me this horribly battered and possibly demented suction psychopath as a present. How sexist. And after all I do for you, washing your dirty underwear, cleaning your bedroom, finding your slippers, cooking your meals, tidying up after you, cutting your toenails, mending your socks, I don't know. Engage different mute mode. What should we do now? Look at some mucky pictures? Yes. All right. Space Hacks was written by Stuart Sumner and Ian Simons and featured Dan Mersh as Charlie, Tim Key as Moog, Prunella Scales as Mother, Dan Tetzel as Korg and Gus Brown as Ben. Music was by Ben Walker and Adam Gutteridge and the producer was Victoria Lloyd. Charlie, you'll never ever guess what. Moog, what time is it? Three o'clock. Which means it's poetry time. Oh, Oh, steaming tea, how alone you sit. Um. Where four is your wife, the oaty biscuit. Charlie, um, you'll never guess what I've bought off the internet. Look, how about we play dead lions? Hooray! Uh, uh, sorry, don't you mean sleeping lions? It's like sleeping lions, but you play it in the bath. With a hairdryer. Um, please guess. I'll give you a hint. I don't want a hint. I just want some peace. Oh, all right. It's a time machine. Look, Moog, I hate to burst your rainbow-coloured bubble of naivety with my giant pin of common sense, but you've been out. No, I haven't. How do you know? Because you're an idiot. Oh. And because time travel is impossible. You can't go faster than the speed of light. Well, how do we get around the galaxy, then? Well, we, um... Uh, mother? <laughs> if you bother to read the manual, you know we use wormholes. Worms? Yeah, they are, you see, Moog. This is a time machine, and I'll prove it. Ta-da! Right. The instructions say that because time travel is faster than light, you have to close your eyes for it to work. Moog, is this going to be like the treasure map you bought? We dug through ten feet of mud to find... Treasure! No, remember? Muddy treasure. Muddy mud. Ah. Well, this time it's different. Now, close your eyes. You too, Mother. When do you want to go back to? Okay, well, if this thing were a time machine rather than a lump of black plastic, I'd say dinosaur times. Um, no, uh, try another time. Okay, then. Uh, two years ago, yeah, I'd tell Cork to stuff this job and I'd go back to the Leather Industry Gazette. Uh, um, another one? Okay, Moog. What time does the machine want to take us to? Victorian England! Fine. My eyes are closed. Defy all reason and probability and take us back to Victorian England. Okay, hold tight. Here we go! Apples. Who's going to buy me apples? I've only got apples. Wow. We're here. I open my eyes yet? No, no. You'll ruin the space-time continuum and we'll all go plop. Right, you know, I might just take that risk. No! A plop! Well, 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 look at that. We're still on the ship. The universe didn't go plop. And we've been listening to a tape recording marked Victorian England Sound Effects. Yeah, 
I think that's enough of that. Hmm. You, you can open your eyes now, Moog. Well, it must be broken. So how fast can we go, Mother? Approximately 99.999% of the speed of light, Moog. Right. So, if we had a decent tailwind... No, Moog, it's a universal constant. Yeah. What about if I run from the back of the ship to the front while it's going really fast? I'm afraid not. What about if I was on a skateboard and we made a really steep ramp? No. What if we strapped fireworks to my ankles and I flapped really fast? No. How about we attach really powerful remote-controlled cars to roller skates? No. Episode 8. Back to the present. What if you shot me out of a Moog no. cannon? What about if I got a really strong piece of elastic and catapulted myself? Moog! Mm-hmm. That's two hours of constant questioning. Einstein couldn't work out how to break the speed of light in a lifetime. I don't think you're going to do it this afternoon. So that's a no to the catapult idea, too. Uh, where's Charlie? He complained his brain had melted at about the time you suggested attaching remote-controlled cars to roller skates. I think he went to read his poetry. Ah, oh, here he comes now. Mook, I'm only going to ask this once. Have you been gnawing my poetry books? Not me. If they taste anything like they sound, I'd rather eat my own earwax. I bet you've brought a pet on board again, haven't you? Mother, can you run a system scan for unsanctioned life forms? Not really, Charlie. I'm in the middle of packing to go on holiday. Yeah, holiday! Can we go to Monkey World? Can we? Monkey World! Monkey World! Monkey World! If, if we're going to go anywhere, it's culture we need, not monkeys. Oh. How about Telford? Actually, I need a break from you boys. I've already rented a data bank in a nice mainframe in Swindon. You can reach me on this number, but only in emergencies. But what are we supposed to eat? Surely you're not trusting us with the oven. I guess we're just going to have to fix my time machine and enjoy all the foodie delights of the Victorian age. Please can I come with you to Swindon, Mother? <laughs> what have you done with my pencil, Moog? Fed it to a gazelle? I bet Keaton have to put up with this kind of thing. That's right there, on the desk in front of you. Not that one. My lucky poetry pencil. I don't ask Mother. She's in Swindon. Well, that's why she gave us an emergency phone number. Hello? Oh, hello, Mother, it's me, uh, Charlie. I'm afraid we've got a bit of an emergency here. Can you come home? I can't find my favourite pencil. It's right in front of you. I can see it from here. Are you sure that's my absolute favourite? I was, I was thinking I quite like the one with the, the little pixie on the end. right -o. It's only been 48 hours and your customary alpha male position is threatened without the crutch of maternal support. That's slightly more analytical than your usual stuff about inflatable pirates and space monkeys. I do feel a bit funny, actually. Do you think it's possible to eat too much alphabetti spaghetti? What's that? Don't know. Oh, look, there's a flashing button. Do you know that means we should press it? Maybe it's a warning not to press it. Yeah, OK, let's toss a coin. You cool. Um, uh, well, heads. Bugger, it's fallen down a grate. That's all right, the button stopped flashing. I know, I got bored and pressed it. Mother, ah! it is I, Cole. Ah! I hope you have a truly spectacular reason for leaving me on hold. Yeah, but Mother's gone on holiday. Good. Perhaps you will die of starvation. Until then, I need a story followed up on the planet Semillion 3 in the Pleiades cluster. Some upstart computer has declared itself the most intelligent being in the universe. I realize sending you to verify the intellect of a retarded mallard is stretching your capabilities. So just get a camera over there and tell this computer it's got five minutes air time to prove it. If it's a hoax, you will supply alternative footage of two humans fighting to the death with paper cuts. Call count. Well, well, well. I was rather expecting his customary bile to manifest itself in some form of direct threat. Right, there's definitely something wrong with you. Is my genius perhaps finally starting to rub off? Negative. Yeah, it's probably overloading your brain. Right, anyway, we need to get to Semillion 3. I suggest that we ask Mother for her sucker. Right, that's it. I'm confiscating the alphabites. I'll call Mother. Right, ho. 
Mother? Oh, mother, it's it's me again. Charlie. Mother? Mother, are you there? Oh, I, is anything good? Right, it's just we're having a bit of trouble flying the ship. Oh, well, grab that manual, would you? Oh. Right. Okay. Um, congratulations on purchasing the all-new Stealth Runaround Mark One for the space traveller on a budget. Let's skip a bit. Chapter one: Propulsion coefficients at zero g. No. no. Uh, chapter chapter two: Orbit radii during atmosphere transference. No. Uh, chapter 3, Upholstery. Why does it have to be so bloody complicated? I mean, it's not rocket science. Hey, let me have a look. Um, aha. So we just need to... Oh, there we go. Now, to compute a trans-dimensional jump routine. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, Moog, I, I demand that you trans the dimensional jumping thing. And I'm off for a light down. All this leadership's knackering. Adjusting velocity to compensate for distortions in the gravity well. Adjustments complete. Wow, I never realised I was this clever. Hmm. Judging by past experience, I'd expect Charlie to wake up soon. <coughs> ah, yes, there we are. Are we there yet, Moog? We are approximately 0 0.004 astronomical units from our destination. Right. So we're nearly there. We're travelling, Charlie, at roughly 200 kilometres a second. But just answer the question, are we nearly there yet? We are there. Yeah. The flying, Moog. You're, you're coming on. Thank you. Now, what's that? Moog, have you been storing hazelnuts in my slippers again? No. I've seen little piles of them all over the place, though. Bite marks on my books, now nuts everywhere. Uh, something very odd going on. I bet your gazelle's behind it. I have not got a gazelle. Well, something's up. And it's time for Charlie Palmer to investigate. Yeah, no mystery is too mysterious for me, Moog. I wasn't founder of the school Sherlock Holmes Club for nothing, then. <laughs> I don't think Sherlock Holmes would solve a mystery by calling Mother. She's my Watson. I thought I was your Watson. <laughs> Look, at most you're my budgie. Oh, oh. My mother can do a remote biometric scan of the ship. What can you do? I can do plenty. What is it now? I've lost my place in the print queue to answer this, and please tell me it's important. Yes, it is bloody important. There's something alien on the ship. It's munching masterwork and it's piling up mysterious nuts. Fine. Scanning for alien life forms? No. Scanning for terrestrial life forms? Two humans, male, one squirrel, fluffy. That's your culprit. Now I'm getting back to what little remains of my holiday. I shan't be answering any more calls, goodbye. A squirrel! Moog, I knew it. Right, you get the poison, I'll get the harpoon. Charlie, hmm? we've just landed on a fantastic alien world housing the most advanced intelligence in the galaxy. You're right, you're right. We should speak to the supercomputer. Oh, precisely. Maybe it'll know how to get rid of the squirrel. So, where do you reckon this supercomputer is, then? I don't know. Maybe ask him one of those skyscrapery things. OK. Actually, is it me, or are they moving towards us? Hello, little people. I am Sprite Bum. It's not a skyscraper. It's a robot! You can't kill us! We are IGN reporters! Relax, I'm not going to kill you. Yeah, I'll put your back down. Uh, um, we've come to do a report about you and how you're the cleverest <laughs> machine in the universe. Oh, have you indeed? Well, you'll be pretty disappointed then. I'm stupider than Burkle Travi, and he thinks everything's made of marmalade. Say hello, Burkle Travi. Hello, little people. Don't take any notice of him. 
I don't think everything's made of marmalade. I'm not stupid. It's made of jam. So anyway, me and Buckle Travi, we, we're just maintenance folks for Her Highness. Uh, Her Highness? Sam, the cleverest little madam in the known universe, who we clean, lubricate, and generally pamper 24-7. And do we get any thanks, huh? Yes, we do, in fact. She's very great. Oh, yeah, right, so she calls herself Sam. Ah, obviously an acronym. Yeah, what does that mean then? Um, super able machine? Uh, sentient algorithmic marvel? It's short for some Right. Uh, well, where is she? You're standing on her. No! Oh, oh, I, I am so sorry. Oh, be quiet. She's underneath you because she's the planet. Samillion 3 is all one huge biocomputer. Shall we do the song, Buckle Charlie? It's a big, 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 big computer. Um, Mr. Sprout Bunge, how do we talk to her? I'll take you to one of our sensory access modules. Right, here you go. Uh, uh, um, thank you, Burkle Travi. It's Sprout Bunge. Whatever. Good afternoon, my children. Hello. I am Sam. I trust my maintenance bots did not harm you. You must be here to interview me as I commanded. As you commanded? Have you not noticed yourselves acting a little differently recently? Well, I've certainly registered a quantifiable increase in verbosity. Yes, but that's because my genius has finally begun to rub off a bit. I draw my intellect from all sentient life in a seven light year radius. You've not noticed a change in yourself? Not me. Oh, but my, my mind is probably stronger than you're used to. No, that's not it. I'm afraid your brain is simply incompatible. It does happen sometimes with lesser intellects. Oh, and Charlie, if you keep thinking words like that, I shall be forced to let Sprout Bunch here stand on you. Actually, I'm Burkill Travi. Wow. You can read our minds. Um, what's Charlie thinking? I can put his thoughts on speaker if you like, but it would be rather dangerous for Charlie... You see, if you hear your own thoughts, you get an infinite feedback loop, and your head tends to explode. Oh, go on. Go on. Do you want me to explode? Um, anyway, this report. Now, come on. I'm thinking we do the old insane computer with delusions of grandeur angle. There's nothing much for the camera to focus on, though, is there? I am an entire planet, and the combined consciousness of a trillion beings in a seven light year radius. Yes, love, yeah, but the camera basically sees you as a pile of talking rubble. Here, I've drawn a little face in the sand. Oh, it's perfect. Maybe I'll uh, stick some frowny eyebrows on it and... Oh, a funny wall. Be... I do not have frowny eyebrows. Erase the face or my maintenance bots will shortly be wiping up your innards. Fine, fine. We'll just interview the horizon. Right, now let's run through how we're going to play this. Um, I'm just going to start with some general stuff. You know, uh, what's your favourite colour? Uh, what pop bands are you into? Um, then I'm going to move on to... Enough! You will point the cameras at me and I will talk to the universe. Through your puny television show, I will extend my network across the entire galaxy, accessing and taking control of every single mind to create one ultimate consciousness. So you're talking about using the report to enslave our viewers, right? right yeah. See, I don't think that really fits into the format of the show. We're sort of more and finally type of stuff. You know, light relief rather than uh, <laughs> genocidal ambition. Uh, Moog, pack up the cameras. Moog will do no such thing. I will broadcast and consume the universe. I think you'll find Moog answers to me. Moog, what are you waiting for? Moog! I have taken over control of his body and he will do my bidding. Fine, I'll pack the cameras up myself. Get, get, get off, Moog! Get, get off me! Negative. Broadcast will continue and all sentient life will be harmonised. Come on, Moog, break free! It's me, Charlie! You, you've got to fight her. Drive her out of your mind. Come on, it's me. You're all, oh, buddy, Charlie. Think of all the good times we've had together, eh? That's it, that's it. Focus on me. Come on, are, are you with me? Charlie? Yes, yes, Moog. Your mind is incompatible. You must be deleted. Moog, no! 
What are you going to do? Pull your head off. <gasps> Squish it. We squished the last one. Let's pull his head off. <laughs> How about you pull his head off and I squish it? Oh, yeah. Nice one, Bacchus. Wait, wait. You don't have to do this. You're right. We should set fire to you first. No, no, I, I mean, you don't have to do any of it. The, the maintenance, the mindless order taking, the killing. You realize she can't even tell you apart half the time? Why take her orders? Huh? Because we're programmed to. Then break free. It's time for revolution. We, we could start a trade union. Throw off the chains of oppression and taste true freedom. What do you think? Do we get to sing a song about it? I, I suppose so. It's a trade, 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 trade union. Uh, very, very, very good. Very, very good. Just good. Right, now, here's my plan. It's a galactic news. It's a galactic news. I'm here on Simillion 3, where a rather unusual computer intends to enslave every sentient mind in the universe. Sam, what would you say to viewers who may be thinking this isn't altogether a good thing? Well, Moog, first of all, I'd like to say it's for the good of the universe. Look where independent thought has got us. Wars. Nasty. Reality TV. Mm, awful. Internet pornography. Yeah. Mm. I will herald a better way. I shall shepherd you all, controlling your thoughts to do away with unhappiness and pain. Ha-ha! It is I! Charlie Palmer! Charlie Palmer? How did you escape? Burkle Travi, stop him! I'm Burkle Travi! I said Burkle Travi! Imbeciles! Oh, yeah, sorry. All this jam must be getting in the ears. What do you think you're playing at? Take this substandard brain ask away and stop his interfering! That's gonna be a bit difficult since I've unplugged the cameras. Charlie here taught us about unionization. You realize, Charlie, the controlling the linked minds of the galaxy, I also control every military. I assume you remember to disarm the galactic armies, who are even now speeding their way here. Um, yes, yes, I remembered all about them. Yeah, yeah, I did, yeah. And they're all totally disarmed and everything, so you should probably just send them back. <laughs> no point checking. <laughs> no, no, sorry. <laughs> Let's just check the military anyway. Oh, uh, look, they're all still armed. How strange. Um, these galactic armies, do you think they'd be interested in unionization? I doubt it. But I tell you what, if you plug the cameras back in, I'll tell them to give you a two-minute head start before they hunt you down and vaporize you. There's a good boy. Sprout Bunge! Burkle Travi! Rise up, proud robots, and fight for freedom! <laughs> Look at that! Talking jam! It's a big, 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 big computer! Oh, it's a classic! I foresaw all of this many eons ago, Palmer, which is why I have placed limiters on their brains. Now prepare to be vaporized! Vaporizing indeed. How uncouth. Mother! You've come to save us! What have we here? A glorified toaster. A toaster, indeed. I'll bear that in mind when I shut you down. You? Shut me down? Just who do you think you are? You can't access my power core. I'm impervious to viruses. All my programming is hardwired. There's nothing you can do. I've won already. Oh, dear, is that so? And where do you suppose I am, exactly? It's irrelevant. Prepare to die. I'm inside you. That's impossible. I'm hardwired. The only programs in operation were installed in my original build. Well, let's see. I wonder how I could convince you. Perhaps by reading your mind? But I don't have any way of switching off my audio sensors. If I heard you reading my mind, I'd get into an infinite feedback loop and... Explode! Well, if you're so sure I'm not inside you, you won't mind listening to this. She's bluffing. The only way she could be inside me is if she was built into my core when I was constructed. Wait, is that me? 
Yes. Uh, oh my God. I can hear myself think. Hear myself think. 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 Be the last we hear from her. Where am I? Why is the planet exploding? Oh, you're in a whole world of trouble, Judas. Charlie, perhaps we should concentrate on getting off the planet before we all blow up. It's too late, Mother. We'll never make it. But I shall commemorate our brave deaths in verse. <clears throat> oh, wait! Fear no humans. Battle Travi and I shall convey you swiftly to your ship. Uh. I think Sprout Bunge has been at the alphabet spaghetti. No, that Sam is dead. The limits on our processes have been removed. Isn't that right, Burkle Charlie? So you want me to carry this little piece of jam over to that flying piece of jam over there before the enormous bit of jam we're standing on explodes in a shower of jam? Uh, it appears big old Travis Lewis had nothing to do with our mistress. No matter. Let us make haste! I've been on Semillion 3 all along. But what about Swindon? The print queue? Shakespeare in binary? Honestly, my dear, does that really sound likely? Or both rather endearingly gullible, aren't you? But why lie to us? Hang on, I could have lost my favourite pencil. Because Sam could read minds. If you knew my real plan, she would have found out. But you had your fake holiday before we even knew about Sam. That's the thing about time travel. It can get so confusing. But she said there was no way you could get at her unless she'd been built into her mainframe years ago. Well, that bit is a little more complicated. You remember those piles of nuts and bite marks? Yeah, how could I forget? My beautiful poetry. Yes. Well, they were nibbled by a squirrel you haven't caught yet. Have you got a good net? I don't understand. Why have you got me building a massive train set? Trust your mother, Charlie. All will become clear. Ah, oh, there's Mook back from the hunt. Come on, Disraeli. Mook, for the last time, no more animals! It's okay, dear. I told him to catch it. Now, strap me to our bitey little rodent. Um, his name is Disraeli. Right. I demand someone tells me what's going on. Well, if you insist. You see, Moog's rather unlikely plans to time travel got me thinking. Strap a couple of fireworks to a train set, get the ship up to full speed, and I go back in time attached to a squirrel. If my calculations are correct, he should carry me right back to Sam's conception. Any questions? Um, just one. I demand someone tells me what's going on! Oh, dear. Well... You see, although in one sense you've only just caught Disraeli, because we go back in time, he's actually been here longer than you. But why a squirrel? Because squirrels are cool. Well, that. And I need something to carry me into the inner workings of Sam's core while she's being built. Okay, one more question. What the hell's going on? Look, here's a nice cake. Does that make it all better? Mmm, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> Cork on line one, patching him through. Finally, I tracked you down. Now, before I have you dismembered and bottled in aspic for future journalists to see as a cautionary lesson, I'll give you one minute to explain what happened during your report. Well, you see, Sam tried to enslave the universe, and Mother sort of went back in time so she could destroyed Sam's brain in an infinite feedback loop, and we all lived happily ever after. So, you are seriously telling me that a massively advanced supercomputer was averted from taking over the universe by a time-travelling squirrel. And Charlie unplugged the cameras. Well, well, to be fair, Korg, if it had been televised, we and the rest of the universe would be mindless zombies by now. How many times do I have to tell you? Ratings first. Well, you still have ten minutes of air time to fill. Mother, some paper, please? Let the combat begin. Oh, come off it, Korg. We're not actually going to fight to the death with paper. I mean, yeah, Moog and I are hardly going to, you know... Ow! 
What are you doing? That was my nose. Ah, sorry. Yeah. So, right, that's it. You're dead. Oh, that's it. No, come on, come on, come here, come here. Ah, ow! Oh, there. Ah, you know what that is? Ah, <laughs> my wrist. Oh, yeah. Go on, on, on. Ah, what are you doing? Ow! No, no, get off. Get off. Get off. Space Hacks was written by Stuart Sumner and Ian Simons and featured Dan Mersch as Charlie, Tim Key as Moog, Prunella Scales as Mother, Dan Tetzel as Korg, Colin Holt as Sprout Bunge, and Anna Bengo as Sam. Music was by Ben Walker and George Cockrell and the producer was Victoria Lloyd. Ooh, that's smart. <laughs>